the Fear Beyond Death, but it looks like Jazzasm is going to be consumed. Pop in the ultimate, unfortunately. The fight on the side of GG so far. Red Panda with the 1v4, but Thresh is taking Lisa the property away as he does dash back in. Bill Ray taking out the top. Still got the Guardian Angel, but GG must have not able to break that down. So he'll be respawning only for six seconds. Man Kicks, Super Ray does pick it up. So that's three members of life versus the two from the trade. Needs to be careful. Gorilla very aggressive, both being dropped pretty hard. You need to keep in mind that the Corrupting Potion for Xanark versus... Oh, v Death Sentence once again. Vans' oh, homing hooks are be. enabled. The flash away, the ignite has been applied. Sexy P with the flash and looking to get the lantern too. Sexy Holy. P, like I said, he's so comfortable. Um, we've, I think we've lost to them. Oh, oh kiddo, Vanzo, Sexy P, trying to walk this one off. He has popped the final hour. The dash is not going to be there. He does get popped. And Vanzo going to be able to pick up that kill. They're having that mid-priority there. So it allows him to walk first. Jungling royalty, 16 man roster without me feels bad, man. Oh, oh. Majin Shintel, very nice pin. The knockoff is there. Poppy doing a lot of damage. Legacy Miggy walking in. Majin Shintel, but a trouble flash to the wall, but here comes Kiddo with him. Hello! The Yelts with other fans will knock up coming to you, but that's gonna be the support dead. Fear beyond death. Poppin just as in the way, and he does go down. Static picking up yet another kill. Red Raven, the last member left in this fight as Aeroflux is just off the front of the screen as the shockwave from Kiddo does pick him up. The ward revealing Frosty. Kiddo wants the ace. He's on the hunt. And uh, he does get it there and there. Dangler for the side of Titans. Meanwhile, bot side and Hibbert are now under siege by Red Panda. The reposition for Vitar. Stop watch by A-Rex, actually. Maybe a miss click of it too, but he does go for the back line. Vitar repositioning. The invis is there. And beautiful fight. But meanwhile, the, the Nexus turret now under siege. With well, the EQ flag and drag sexy piece. Super fed. Needs to be careful. Cataclysm. Well, not Cataclysm. It's a Margin Shinta ultimate. The pin against the wall. Vanzor. Heal invested. Gorilla. Nice little pin from Kiddo. Does get the start onto sexy P. Margin Shinta will re engage. And it looks like royalty not going to be winning this fight. Zalo's trying to walk away. The movement speed. As if you haven't noticed, the key stun decision for the top lane. We have the Garen with Predator. Predator Garen the Predator Garen in the top lane with TP. It's actually a pretty, pretty well known bull these days. Very popular. Air Champion taking a lot of damage fields late. So the, the Q return will be there. What a play, what a move. Flash in the Q flash looks oh. like uh, it's gonna be a little bit close actually. Oof. Blue says so Johnny Ultimate Ooh, gonna be wasted. Okay. Sexy be left as a kitty alone out in the open. Does go down. Fans are playing Thunder Aggro. No place left, so the turret should be pretty squishy. Rain walking in kill just jab the ashing away from the rain stun. No gold guard, thanks. Legacy Miggy Garth running too far away to go for the contest. Gorilla just trying to create some sorts of that. Will the Baron then second death is repeat coming through? Ops not to take the fight as they are sitting on a lot of gold. They just came through from the base. Gorilla. Sexy B Lantern. Sexy B just like Oh my god, there's an ulti. I don't know what it is. Soul Shackles. Janna dying to the turret and uh, maybe dying to the Urgot. So that's gonna be the final fight coming through. Urgot versus the world next is exposed. They do turn back on passing out the snare. And that's mad mayhem going down. <laughs> With the reposition from Baton, not gonna be able to keep it alive, unfortunately. Very good effort. The flash up until the source, nothing too good. Red Panda on the siege. Looking to get that last little bit of damage. The rest of the knot is there, but support down. Jungler down and 80 can Super fed Pitar, the Kaiser looking to try and carry this game. Meanwhile, Silver gonna be skidding very well. Teleport has come to up to Kali, but the Silver movement speed applied. Locked down onto the back line. The key dredge line will be there. They're able to just delete Pitar, so he's not an issue. Nini gonna be caught out as well. They're going down. Very nice pick coming through for the side of Titans. Knocking down on the inhibitor tar, so they definitely. I don't know if Victor can match this. Chaos Storm, Aero Frosty. Hasty Purify trying to walk it away. Does Paul is just so quick though. Flashes away as the last resort. The flash will see to finish him off. Still got the Tara group pretty well. Poke out of it. Out of oh, another overstay coming through from Patar. Looks like the stun will be there into the, the pits. The Q damage. Silver so finally getting the shot down. That's going to be a massive paycheck. Plus 500 for Silver. Uh, Good blue side bot lane. Is G looking okay? Currently down CS it seems just because of the lanes. Red Raven currently 15 to 25 from uh, Unhappy uh, Birthday. Just Zazzle, top side area oh. here, has the flash available, does flash away, but the flash and auto attack was gonna be there. The first blind in the top lane single. Very, very aggressive. Lands the chain, not looking too good for Rain. One last auto attack will finish him off very, very cheeky. Sally kill in the mid side. Kiddo 2 and uh, Rain for 0. Up Lisbon. Yeah, pretty hype if you guys don't know if you are, haven't been following the scene recently. Basically, Miggy rejoined. Hold that thought though. Bit of a gang attempt at the top side. So the Q connection does land. Lots of slows apply. The Guardian for the extra movement speed. The, the run around is giving them the, the moves. The flip. Gorilla will go down there. 
Glebe does get the passive, the reach coming through, Pitar just narrowly dodging that, or dropping the aggro. Glebe with the over investment does go down though. We know topside B, the Dyer's the first gank of the match for his side at least. Uh, passive. The Desmond does come through, Kali landing a little bit low. Looks like Jazazm here, but won't be able to help us when Raven does die. Jazazm, Shelly now sieging at the turret. Chandler's not super low, but just dies to the Shelly, he does not, but Garth Rimmel with a flash into Zazm. Counter-Strike, Ace in the hole. Well, cool. maybe at this point, you probably want to put a little bit more focus towards them and try to get them, like, definitively ahead. So the double knock up coming through and yet another gank attempt, but it looks like Lisa properly going to be going down as Ooh. Mancakes. Oh, hang on! Not quite. Mancakes dropping the aggro a little bit too early. Um... Guys, with regards to the area comp, I'm not too sure who the main players are. They have a fairly big roster. They're still trying to work out themselves as far as I know. Oh. But uh, TP mid lane tied a little bit low. Looks like he will be able to finish the TP, uh. but that's going to be the support. Dead sub Saharan taking out to the Ignite as well. Lots of damage, but uh, no follow up, unfortunately. Snare connecting onto the Jarvan as he picks up the Drake. Ignite taking a target, but no damage going to be brought through. Oh, why is it mad? Dem Demula? Where's Unburnt? Does go down. Mad Mayhem flashing up the shield. We keep keeping life in the disdain. No. Hang on, friend. Red Panda, Counter Strike coming through. GG, Mr. Knock. They just play it slow. This is basically a free kill. Total Swords gaining the slow applied as well. Concussion play. But the jump over onto the wall. But the key not going to be that least and properly misses. Uh, GG, Mr. Knock on the chase. But mid side rotation from. So the, the charge from behind as well as Lee and properly collapses. This collapse is going to be the 2 for 1. The Patara reposition. Lots of damage does come through, but Claire able to pick up that kill. You know, Lisa and properly jungle combat. Flash away. Alia looking for the wall. Trump, is that you? Kill it with the dash over. Miggy left behind. The teleport is there. Synergy on the back line. Miggy trying to jump over, but Kiddo might just get caught out as a result. Big fight. That's Ray picking the kill. Unstoppable. Or an ultimate double kill. The box has been applied. The knockups only going to be hitting Synergy, though. Boris with the engage. Beautiful. Lisa and Guide with the paranoia coming through. And uh, Batar being forced to the fight. Just narrowly surviving this one. A-Rex able to just delete the Tiltosaurus support. And uh, the Riddle needs to be careful. Nobody else there to help him out either. Does get locked down as a Counter-Strike. Uh, death sentence. Paranoia coming through. Looking to get that backline seat. He does dive through. Patan not in a good spot. Looks like it will be his first death fight for one. And uh, Mancakes plus Patan. This is a beautiful fight. The comeback. Exactly what they needed. Titans taking that uh, win quite convincingly. Baron locked up with Darth Rhymer onto the XCP bot line. Needs to be careful, but the grab for Gorilla could be grabbing yeah, the tank towards the team. That's not where he wants, wants, wants to go. Martin Shinto, kiddo. Words are hard. Rain. Rift, multiple members dead. Chain connects, the gold cards there, but it will not keep him alive as he does go down. Goth drop, kill looking for the pop blast, I'm not gonna find anyone besides Sub Saharan though. Does almost go down, but the heal's gonna be enough to keep him alive just the time. Now they're escaping. Kiddo, a little bit of the overstep. Garth Ryan with the knockup is there. Kiddo does go down. Actually, quite close. The, looking for the steal margin. Shintel, big fight. Drake goes over to red team. But Repel coming up sexy. Be red. Blue side looking very strong. So the Drake was secure, but they will lose the jungle. The fight not looking too hot. Kiddo trying to walk this one off. He does not have the flash, though. So he will go down to rain as my legacy. Zanok gets the lockdown. Margin Shintel. Turn back in. Garth Ryan will pick up the kill on the gorilla. Rain and no mana. No flash. <laughs> does have the cleanse though. Lockdown is the upside to use it. The soft push infested. Modern Shintel going down. Kiddo for double. Make that a triple. Big boy play coming through for the Sister Now with the stopwatch. Lots of damage. But taunting a very good job of positioning this time. Not to be deleted just yet. But here comes Hawkins. The team may shine. Eat my words. Baby, less than three. Big fight. Man kicks. Cyber Ninja does go down. Unfortunately, Man kicks left in the back line. As Kaelin just narrowly surviving that one. Tildosaurus looking to try and just create pressure so at least he properly can walk this one. Pressure to the other team. And it takes Nasus away from that kind of valuable split position he's in. Yeah, exactly that. And uh, GT able to just punish the Nasus split push. Uh, despite the hijacked uh, depth charge, not going to be able to capitalize off that, unfortunately. But the flash in Death Set is not going to connect with Soul. Mastery Taurus. He's like this little bit of banter between the Jitsu in the middle, Ace in the hole. Should not have happened. That's going to be yet another member dead. And uh, the hijacked Rise reposition. Mr. Not going to be caught off by his own ultimate, it seems. Hawkins, Ooh. almost getting bursted. And uh, he's just able to fade his way out of the... There, it does get knocked out of the con. Goes down, Victor dead as well. The reposition run happy into the late W. Very nicely played. Uh, besides that late W, or early I mean, W. The team fight was looking so good, but unfortunately for some reason, Red Raven spinning off from his team just... This is bad for uh, the side of a lot team. Because now you have no pressure in that lane. Even if 
rain does come to gank, that can easily be turned on you, because it's technically... Uh, very the aggressive, too. Ignite applied, rain with the gank, the missile, the flash is there, looks like the first blood is gonna be on to Kiddo, oh, oh. the murder... Somebody please stop uh, duck making noises. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> from Saharan, champion. Oh. Still has the Brawl Malt, which is as we're pricking down the Demacia. We'll be able to take out Suka. Oh. And uh, looks like an ATG sucks. Kiddo might just need to flash out. The snowball does connect. Aero Frosty, Chandra start popping the quickest, expecting the flash over. Kiddo flashes the wrong direction, though. Chandra getting the flying drag. Garth right in the look. Um, taunt. But uh, looks like Garth can be able to flash out as well. So it's a bit of a. Bit I'll, of a try, I'll try to repair just to the champion at this point. It's getting a bit confusing. Speaking of which, it's on the top side, we're gonna get yet another connection. Oh, it's gonna be there! The flash out, the camp on the top side is real. Man, case putting the tower aggro. Here comes Silas with the counter wave. Very aggressive, but they can't click on the lantern just yet. Yeah, There's the cataclysm, Air Frost is on the Big trade switch. Three Reposition from Vanzel with the ulti teleport here into the trap. Zato taking the net plus the headshot, so he is chucked down half up. Miggy repositioning over the wall does not have his knockup before but Kiddo picking up the kill onto the Nautilus. The damage. And the, that uh, that trade on bot lane, I think, is actually well not trade that kill on top Frosty. lane. I think is actually pretty massive. Oh, the cheeky little auto attack from the fade away kid getting the first kill for himself in the mid side. Weakish early game. Speaking of which, Patan oh, does land the corrupting chains with Jarvan and Reason properly. Heroes entrance cataclysm. Oh, gets Patan very low, but not gonna be going down yet. The CC and looking for the headshot, he does connect. It is Volton gets the one kill on as he does die. Hijacked, why well, is hitting <laughs> running into tracks? Don't play in traffic, stay in school, kids. It's cool. Sexy yeah. P. Tier 2 turn does fall. Kiddo looks like uh, the block is gonna be the Amarnish Intel, though. No, thank you. Oh, Ooh, there's oh. the interaction I was talking about earlier. Amarnish Intel beautifully timing to dodge the poppy knockback. Flash ignite in sexy pieces. Thank you. Next, we've taken down Patan, just narrowly actually surviving. But the flash snack, thanks for the snacks, carries on the walk. Must not get to get the kill. Does manage to pick up onto the 80 carry as well. But of a fiesta, Nas is the last member of life versus the two. Total so switches up to the leaf, Mr. Not, as uh, he gets yet another st I'm not uh, a connoisseur of Nas, so I don't yeah. know exactly uh, how much like he's going for, but that seems to me like it's a low number for him. At this Do point we? Again. No, no, but that was the old Nasus before the Q changes and whatnot, so it should be higher than that now. Do we have any Nasus uh, mains in the chat? Cataclysm, flash invested by GG Mr. Not. Three man sandwich, not able to walk that one off as it does go down. Dio, where did he was a D2 mid when he was here? Yeah, that's right. Zadok. Going for the last ditch effort to try catch out with Raven, but. Maybe Miggy. Does get the wall pick. Off. If it doesn't get it's not looking good, good for the side of royalty. We will be going yeah, again. Number three is the Nexus is, is on the siege. <laughs> and the yeah, Nexus GG. win. GG Wolfie. A kiddo force in the mid side. He has that priority. Got a lot more kill pressure on since fit at this point. Teleport has come through blue side. Or oh, I'm looking to join the same with the TF ultimate. Looks like Lazy Biggie will be caught. Our sexy P on the other side of the wall. That's, what a, lot, what is... that's a lot invested for one kill. <laughs> Did the entire team <laughs> I just have that as they aren't expected. It is a war game on top side, but of a trade, the world ender popped, but uh, fear beyond death. Popped as well. Zanuck does go down in the 1v1 situation. Losing but attack. Rain receives the lantern. Big fight. The shove back in. Vanzel flashing out or jumping out. Rock can be oh. able to survive though. Sexy P, the heal has been invested. Sexy P, a little bit low, trying to keep him alive. Looks like he will be going down. Support dead. Make that uh, both supports, Garth versus two sexy P. Garth trying to get the final kill, but he does not oh. as he does go down. Want to grab, come here, Gorilla. Garth right million for the safe though. Rain getting locked down, the gold card pulled through. Rain, cheeky auto attack, the kiting is there. Does go down on the Garth, and it uh, looks like sexy. Uh, he left to die. The Cataclysm does come down, locking in. Only the Gorilla, as Gorilla does end up dying to Vans up on the backline. Monish Intel able to take out the Eddie Carry, so sexy P, sexy P, Monish Intel. Getting the ace. Yeah. Good steal there by the side of No frosty pull damage onto Tigger. Unfortunately, the ultimate not quite reaching. Let's get the slow. Red Raven looking for the bounces. Guys get the cleaver cue. Getting the kill onto the Kaiser actually. Oh, big ultimate coming through from Man Case. Locking down Multiman, but the paranoia is not gonna keep the lights. Billy Ray does die least and properly the 200. Ping Lisa and player A Rex, lanterning out of that one. 
In one mid side, the siege has live, putting against the wall, sexy B very aggressive. Ignite can be wasted by sexy B, unfortunately. But a uh, bit of a trade actually, as Zanuck has invested his teleport to the bottom. Manu Shintal still. Oh, there he is actually also coming through for the teleport. The knockup gonna be blocked, but the heal knockup here. Leggy, let's see Miggy alive for very long as Gorilla does pick up the kill. Nicely played. Good. Uh, first to play around the, the bot lane and it moves. So, potentially oh, no. putting him top instead. Frosty. Oh. Locked down. Hmm. Ulti in for unhappy. Very nicely played. A damage, two members done, but support for support. Blue side teleport has come through. Castle looking to join the fight. No sign of the. Oh, there he is! Nebia as well. The Castle trying to clean up where the rest of GG could not. Mr. Not Super Low does go down. Beautiful step into the flash, but Red Pan able to finish him off with that hex stick. Revolver. Lots of damage going through. Man Kicks does get dismounted. Trying to get the damage onto the jungle, but he will not be there. But Tar, the last member alive on the side of. Uh, a GG, but the stopwatch used by Akali for the disengage as Gloop walks in the tanky front line, and that's going to be the clean ace. Okay, that post is made. Let's go Twitter. Definitely, I think getting a first bud there would have been really great for the top lane. Echo though, rotating towards the top side. Oh, nice little snack connection. Phoenix, the trap combination, there it is. The full combo pops the heal, the flash away as well. Super low, but unfortunately, it's to go off with that one. A little bit of trouble on the top. Dying Beetle. Valiant, no flash available, but they are going to pull you off the. Tigger needs the a lockdown, won't get it unfortunately. Has the sedge ulti though. I think he probably could have actually killed Rakan there if he played it correctly. What are you doing though? Ref Shadow Sport on the ward. Vans are contesting. Scuttle does get secured by Rain. Reposition, Vanzor. Flashes over the trap. Lots of damage, just short required. Just need one more auto, one more key punk. Both walking blindly, does get oh. caught off Rain. Speaker getting caught off Sexy B with the Death is a Flay box combination. Legacy Miggy popping the Zonius, but it looks like uh, the final hour pin. Sexy P, Rain, Nexus, Tarak, no. the, the, the base Tarak under siege. Flag and drag out. Tarak does fall and him to not expose. Elder Drake, GG side cannot afford to defend us. Just need to let it go so close, you cannot position like that, Tillosaurus. But uh, narrowly surviving, like likely Thresh missing the hook. Do you want to a little bit low? That needs to be careful. The heal has been applied. Tillosaurus just narrowly does go down with the returning pizza. One for one, support for jungle flash in. Patai getting yet another kill. Carly four for naught. Looking to try to run away with the game. Oh. Yeah, this is kind of how you're supposed to look for. What? Yeah, that is. Oh, you no, 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 you, you look you look for low variance hooks in the sense that it's almost impossible unless they burn a summoner to, to... Oh! Zadok does get the solo kill. Lens team supports Sexy B. He's very, very comfortable in his thrash. 
And Sonic with topside does get the disdain. Lands the fear beyond death, but it looks like Jazzasm is gonna be consumed properly. The ultimate, unfortunately, the fight on the side of GG so far. Red Panda with the 1v4, but Thresh is taking Leeson properly away as he does dash back in. Billy Ray taking out the top. Still got the Guardian Angel, but GG must not able to break that down. So here we respawn in for seconds. Man kicks super low, does pick it up. So that's three members of life versus that's two from the trade. Needs to be careful. Gorilla very aggressive, both being dropped pretty hard. Need to keep in mind that the corrupting potion for Xanak versus oh death sentence once again. Vance's oh. homing hooks Sexy are enabled. The flash away, the ignite has been applied. Sexy P with the flash and looking to get the lantern too. Sexy oh, P, me. like I said, he's so cut. Um, we've, I think we've lost to them. Oh, oh kiddo, Vanzor, Sexy P, trying to walk this one off. He has popped the final hour. The dash is not going to be there. He does get popped. And Vanzor going to be able to pick up that kill. You know, having that mid-priority there. So it allows him to walk first. Jungling royalty, 60-man roster without me feels bad, man. Oh, Margin Shintel, very nice pin. The knockoff is there. Poppy doing a lot of damage. Legacy Mickey walking in. Margin Shintel, but a trouble flash to the wall. But here comes Kiddo with him. Hello! The yells with other fans, or knockout coming through, but that's gonna be the support dead. Fear beyond death, popping just as in the way, and he does go down. Sadak picking up yet another kill. Red Raven, the last member left in this fight, as Aeroflash is just off the front of the screen as the shockwave from Kiddo does pick him up. The ward revealing Frosty. Kiddo wants the ace, he's on the hunt. And uh, he does get it there and then. Dangler for the side of Titans. Meanwhile, bot side and Hibbert are now under siege by Red Panda. The reposition for Vitar. Stop watch by Aorex, actually. Maybe a miss click of it too, but he does go for the back line. Vitar repositioning. The invis is there and beautiful fight. But meanwhile, the, the Nexus Tire now under siege. With, well, the EQ flag and drag sexy P super fed. Needs to be careful. Cataclysm. Well, not Cataclysm. It's a Marge Shinta ultimate. The pin against the wall. Vanzor. Heal invested. Gorilla. Nice little pin from Kiddo. Does get the start on to sexy P. Marge Shinta will re engage. It looks like royalty not going to be winning this fight. Zello trying to walk away. The movement speed. So if you haven't noticed, the key stun decision for the top lane, we have the Garen with the Predator. The Predator Garen in the top lane with TP. It's actually pretty, pretty well known bull these days. Very popular. Air Champion taking a lot of damage fields late, so the, the Q return will be there. What a play, what a move. Flash here, the Q flash looks oh. like uh, it's gonna be a little bit close actually. Oof. Blue says your only ultimate gonna be wasted. Sex to be left as a kitty alone out of the open. Does go down, fans are playing Thunder Aggro. No place left, so the turret should be pretty squishy. Rain walking in and kill just jabbed the Ashen away from the rain stun. No gold gone, thanks. Legacy Miggy Goth running with too far away to go for the contest. Gorilla just trying to create some sites. So that will be Baron. Then second death is repeat <laughs> coming through. Ops not to take the fight as they are sitting on a lot of gold. They just came through from the base. Gorilla. Sexy B Lantern. Sexy B just like Oh my god, there's an ulti. I don't know what it is. Soul Shackles. Janna dying to the turret and uh, Mimi dying to the Urgot. So that's gonna be the final fight coming through. Urgot versus the world next exposed. They do turn back on passing out the snare and that's mad him going down. <laughs> the reposition from Batar not gonna be able to keep it alive unfortunately. Very good effort. The flash up until the source. Nothing too good. Red Panda on the siege. Looking to get that last little bit of damage. The rest of the knot is there but support down. Jungler down and AD can. Super fed Pitar, the Kaiser looking to try and carry this game. Meanwhile, Silver gonna be skating very well. Teleport has come through. Here comes Akali, but the Silver movement speed applied. Locked down onto the back line. The key dredge line will be there. They're able to just delete Pitar, so he's not an issue. And Nini gonna be caught out as well. They're going down. Very nice pick coming through for the side of Titans. Knocking down on the inhibitor tar, so they definitely. I don't know if Victor can match this. Chaos Storm, Aero Frosty. Next to Purify trying to walk it away. Does Paul is just so quick though? Flashes away is the last resort. The flash will see you to finish him off. Juggled the Terra group pretty well. Bulk out of it. Out from OTP. Oh, no, the overstake coming through from Patar. Looks like the stun will be there into the, the pits. The Q damage. Silver so finally getting the shot down. That's going to be a massive paycheck. Plus 500 for uh, Silver. Good blue side bot lane. Oh. AG looking okay. Currently down CS teams just because of the lanes. Red Raven currently 15 to 25 from uh, Unhappy uh, Birthday. Just as a top side area oh. here has the flash available, does flash away, but the flash and the auto attack was gonna be there. The first blood in the top lane single. Very, very aggressive. Lands the chain, not looking to go for Raid. One last auto attack will finish him off very, very cheeky. Selic on the mid side, Kiddo 2 and uh, Rain for 0. What's up, Elizabeth? Yeah, pretty hype. If you guys don't know, if you are, I haven't been following the scene recently. Basically, Miggy rejoined. Hold that thought, though. Bit of a gank attempt at the top side. The Q connection does land. Lots of slows applied. The Guardian for the extra movement speed. The, the runaround is giving them the, the moves. The flip. Gorilla will go down there. 
Glib does get the passive, the reach coming through Pitar just narrowly dodging that to drop on the aggro. Glib with the open investment does go down though. Minor topside, B the re dives the first gank of the match. For his side at least, uh, passive. The Desmond does come through, Kali landing a little bit low, looks like Jazazm here, but won't be able to help us when Raven does die. Jazazm, Shelly now sieging at the turret. Chandler's not super low, might just die to the Shelly, he does not, but Garth Rimmel the flash into Jazazm. Counter-Strike, Ace in the hole. Well, maybe at this point you probably want to put a little bit more focus towards them and try to get them, like, definitively ahead. The double knock up coming through and yet another gank attempt, but it looks like Lisa probably going to be going down as Mad Cakes. Oh, hang on! Not quite. Man Cakes dropping the aggro a little bit too early. Um, guys, with regards to the area comp, I'm not too sure who the main players are. They have a fairly big roster. They're still trying to work it out for themselves, as far as I know. Oh. But uh, TP mid lane oh. tired a little bit low. Looks like he will be able to finish the TP, uh. but that's going to be the support. Dead Sub Saharan taking out to the Ignite as well. Lots of damage, but uh, no follow up, unfortunately. Snare connecting onto the John Jarvan as he picks up the Drake. Ignite taking a target, but no damage going to be. Ruan 3. Oh, why is it mad? Dem Demula? Oh, where's Sunburn? Does go down. Mad Mayhem flashing up the shield. We keep keep him alive in the disdain. No. Hang on, friend. Red Panda, kind of strike coming through. GG, Mr. Knock. He just plays slow. This is basically a free kill. Total source gaining the slow applied as well. Concussion play. But the jump over onto the wall. But the key not going to be that least and properly misses. Uh, GG, Mr. Knock on the chase. But mid side rotation from. So the, the charge from behind as well as Lisa and probably can lax this collapse is gonna be the two for one with Patar reposition. Lots of damage does come through, but Claire able to pick it back kill. You know, Lisa and properly jungle combat. Flash away. Oh yeah, looking for the wall. Trump, is that you? Kid with the dash over. Miggy left behind. The teleport is there, Sinish on the back line. Miggy trying to jump over, but Kiddo might just get caught out as a result. Big fight, that's raping the kill. It's stoppable. Or an ultimate double kill, the box has been applied. The knock is only going to be hitting Singe though. Doris with the engage. Beautiful Lisa and Guide with the paranoia coming through, and uh, Batar being forced to the fight, just narrowly surviving this one. A Rex able just to just delete the Tiltosaurus support. And uh, but Riddle needs to be careful, nobody else there to help him out either. Does get locked down to the Counter Strike. Uh, death sentence, paranoia coming through, looking to get that backline seat. Does dive through. Baton not in a good spot, looks like it will be his first death fight for one, and uh, Mancakes plus Baton, this is a beautiful fight, the comeback, exactly what they needed, Titans taking that uh, win quite convincingly, Baron knocked up with Darth Rhyme onto this XCP bot line, needs to be careful, but the grab for Gorilla can be grabbing the tank towards the team, that's not where he wants, wants, wants to go, Martin Shinto, Kiddo, words are hard, Rain, Rift, multiple members dead, Chain connects, the gold card's there, but it will not keep him alive as he does go down. Goth, Killer looking for the Pop Blossom, not gonna find anyone besides Sub Saharan though. Does almost go down, but the heal's gonna be enough to keep him alive just in time. Now the escaping. Kiddo, a little bit of the overstep. Goth right with the knockup is there. Kiddo does go down, actually quite close. The, looking for the steal margin. Shintel, big fight. Drake goes over to red team. Repel coming up sexy, be a blue side looking very strong to so the Drake was secured, but they will lose the jungle. The fight not looking too hot. Kiddo trying to walk this one off. He does not have the flash though. So he will go down to rain as a legacy. Zanok gets the lockdown. Marge is Shintel. Turn back in. Garth Ryan will pick up the kill on the gorilla. Rain and no mana. No flash. <laughs> Does have the cleanse though. Lockdown is the upside to use of the soft push infested. Marge Shintel going down. Kill for double. Make that a triple. Big boy play coming through for the Sister Now with the staff watch. Lots of damage. But taunting a very good job of positioning this time. Not to be deleted just yet. But here comes Hawkins. The two Misha. Got to my be words. Less than three. Big five man kicks. Cyber Ninja does go down. Unfortunately, man kicks left in the back line. As Kaylin just narrowly surviving that one. Tildosaurus looking to try and just create pressure so at least and properly can walk this one. Pressure to the other team. And it takes Nasus away from that kind of valuable split position he's in. Yeah, exactly that, and uh, GT able to just punish the NASA split push. Uh, despite the hijacked uh, depth charge, not going to be able to capitalize off that unfortunately, but the flash in death set is not going to connect it. Whistle. Mastery Taunt, seems like there's a little bit of banter between the two in the middle, ace in the hole. Should not have happened, that's going to be yet another member dead, and uh, the hijacked rise reposition must have not going to be caught off by his own ultimate it seems. Hawkins, Ooh. almost getting bursted. And uh, he's just able to fade his way out of the there. does get knocked out of Rakan. Goes down, Victor dead as well. The reposition for unhappy into the late W. Very nicely played. Uh, besides that late W. Or early I mean, w the team fight was looking so good, but unfortunately for some reason Red Raven's spinning off from his team. Just this is bad for uh, the side of a lot team. Because now you have no pressure in that lane. Even if 
rain does come to gank, that can easily be turned on you because it's technically southern. Very Ignite aggressive ignite applied. Rain with the gank numbers are the flashes there. Looks like the first blood is gonna be on to Kiddo. Ooh. The middle. Somebody please stop uh, duck making noises. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> from Saharan, champion. Oh. Still has the Brawl Malt, which is as when pricking down the Demacia, we'll be able to take out Suka. Oh. And uh, looks like an ATG site. Kiddo might just need to flash out, the snowball does connect. Aero Frosty, Challenger start popping the quickest, expecting the flash over. Kiddo flashes the wrong direction though, Challenger. Getting the flying drag, Garth, right in the look. Um, taunt, but uh, looks like Garth can be able to flash out as well, so it's a bit of a... Bit I'll, of try, I'll try to repair it just as a champion at this point. It's getting a bit confusing. Speaking of which, it says on the top side, we're going to get yet another connection. Oh, it's going to be there. The flash out. The camp on the top side is real. Man case pulling the tower aggro. Here comes Silas with the counter rain. Very aggressive bot. They can't click on the lantern just yet. Yeah, the capitalism air frost is not rated. Big trade switch. Reposition from Vanzel with the ulti teleport here into the trap. Zato taking the net plus the headshot. So he is checked down half up. Miggy repositioning over the wall. Does not have his knockup, unfortunately. But Kiro picking up the kill onto the Nautilus. The damage. And the, that uh, that trade on bot lane, I think, is actually well not trade that kill on top Frosty. lane. I think is actually pretty massive. Oh, the cheeky little auto attack from the fadeaway kid getting the first kill for himself in the mid side. Weakish early game. Speaking of which, Patar oh, does land the corrupting chains, but Jarvan and Leeson properly. Heroes entrance cataclysm. Oh, good Patar very low, but not gonna be going down yet. The CC and looking for the headshot, he does connect. It is Volton gets the one kill on as he does die. Hijacked while getting <laughs> running into tracks. Don't play in traffic. Stay in school, kids. It's cool. Sexy yeah. Pete. Tier two turn does four killer. Looks like uh, the block is gonna be the Amanda Shintel. Though no, thank you. Oh, there's the interaction I was talking about earlier. Amanda Shintel, beautifully timing to dodge the poppy knockback. Flash ignite in sexy pieces. Thank you. Next, we taking down the time just narrowly actually surviving. But the flash snack. Thanks for the snacks, guys. On the water, this is not looking to get the kill. Does manage to get onto the AD carry as well. But of a fiesta, Nas is the last member alive versus the two. So the switch is up to the leaf, Mr. Not as uh, he gets yet another. St I'm not uh, a connoisseur of Nas, so I don't yeah. know exactly uh, how much like he's going for. But that seems to me like it's a low number for him. At this Do point we? In the game. No, no, but that was the old Nasus before the Q changes and whatnot, so it should be higher than that now. Do we have any Nasus uh, mains in the chat? Cataclysm, flash invested by GG Mr. Not. Three man sandwich, not able to walk that one off as it does go down. Do you know where did he was a D2 mid when he was here? Yeah, that's right. Zadok. Going for the last ditch effort to try and catch out with Raven, but. Legacy Miggy does get the wall pick. Off. If it doesn't get it's not looking good, good for the side of royalty. We will be going yeah, again. Number three is the there, Nexus yeah. is on the siege. <laughs> and the yeah, Nexus GG. win. GG will be a kiddo force in the mid side. He has that priority. Got a lot more kill pressure on since at this point. Teleport has come through blue side. Or look at the join. Same with the TF ultimate. Looks like Lazy Biggie will be caught out. Sexy P on the other side of the wall. That's, what a, lot, what is... that's a lot invested for one kill. Did the entire team <laughs> I just have that as they aren't expected. It is a world game on top side, but of a trade, the world ender popped, but uh, fear beyond death. Popped as well. Zanuck does go down in the 1v1 situation, losing the attack. Rain receives the lantern. They fight the shove back in. Vanzel flashing out or jumping out. Rock can be oh. able to survive though. Sexy P, the heal has been invested. Sexy P, a little bit low, trying to keep him alive. Looks like he will be going down. Support dead. Make that uh, both supports, Garth versus two sexy P. Garth trying to get the final kill, but he does not oh. as he does go down. Want to grab, come here, Carilla. Garth right in for the safe though. Rain getting locked down the gold card, pulled through. Rain, cheeky auto attack, the kiting is there. He does go down on the Garth, and it uh, looks like sexy. Uh, he left to die. The cataclysm does come down, locking in. Only the Gorilla, as Gorilla does end up dying to Vans up on the backline. Manu Shintel able to take out the Eddie Carry, so sexy B, sexy P, Manu Shintel getting the ace. Yeah, good steal there by the side of Ray. No frosty pull damage onto Tigger, unfortunately, the ultimate not quite reaching. Let's get the slow Red Raven looking for the bounces. Guys, get the cleaver cue. Getting the kill onto the Kaiser, actually. Big ultimate coming through from Mad Case. Locking down multi member. The paranoia is not going to keep him alive. Speedy Ray does die. Leeson properly. 200 ping. Leeson player A Rex. Lanterning out of that one.
In one mid side, the C channel. I have the pin against the wall. Sexy P very aggressive. Ignite can be wasted by Sexy B, unfortunately. But a uh, bit of a trade, actually. As Zanuck has advanced his teleport to the bottom. Manishint are still. Oh, there he is, actually. Also coming through for the teleport. The knockup gonna be blocked, but the heal knockup here. Leggy, let's see Miggy alive for very long as Gorilla does pick up the kill. Nicely played. Good. Uh, to play around the, the bot lane and it moves. So, potentially oh, no. putting him top instead. Frosty. Oh. Locked down. Ulti in for unhappy, very nicely played. The uh, damage, two members done, but support the support. Blue side teleport has come through. Kasten looking to join the fight. No sign of the. Oh, there he is! Nevia as well, but Kasten trying to clean up where the rest of GG could not. Must not super low, does go down. Beautiful step in the flash, but Red Pan able to finish him off with that hex stick. Revolver. Lots of damage coming through. Man Kegs does get dismounted. Trying to get the damage onto the jungle, but he will not be there. But Tar, the last member alive on the side of. Uh, a GG for the stopwatch used by Akali for the disengage as Gloop walks in the tanky frontline and that's gonna be the clean ace, uh, no not clean ace, but uh, ace nonetheless into the ground under turret, very nicely played by uh, the Singe, the beekeeper. That is a nice skin. I have so many Singe skins for no reason. Well, the flash into the poison, the flip, Gorilla, very nicely played, Ooh. looks like he will actually get that's the kill. Awesome. Mid lane, no it's not, that's support, never mind. I was about to say, that's a mid lane Janix, he's just always mid for some reason. Will actually get a negate, but it looks like Paris 69 never pick up the kill. Nicely played. Cataclysm winning Lucky Down Paris 69. Ultimate from Gianna. Teleport's gonna be brought in, bringing in. EQ on Garth Ryan Miller. Sub Sahara does go down. Kid over reposition. Air Frost, he has ultimate. T Zanuck starting to come through from the side as well. Just as a very low shockwave. Miggy missing the knockup, but miscommunication pops. The ultimate does end up dying. Zanuck, just as a Stuck in the pit, Red Raven being zoned away from the Garth Wang with a killer combination and just as it does go down for the double. Orange coming through, snowballing Nuni. Uh, Heroes and shows looking for the knockup, does manage to connect the man case, picking the kill onto Glebe. Looks like uh, the second Eddie carry will go down as well. So big a play coming through and uh, no size of red pound, even though the teleport was available. Tier 1 for, trying to falling in favor of Blee. Early on, huh? Chanda Sloth and Red Raven getting a lot of damage, but he does end up losing his Eddie carry for Vanzel picking up that kill. And it was looking so good for the bot side, but then it didn't. <laughs> Just like that, a trade for Eddie Carry and support. But here goes Kiddo with the Pop Blossom. Lucky Down Red Raven, first member done. That ace in the hole gonna be taken. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we are here today with uh, the high school esports league for VS Gaming. I am joined by a good old Sheepy here. And we are going to uh, see what today brings to us, see what the young the young school people have uh, installed for us. We casted the championship finals in July, and we, I'm pretty excited to see what we're going to have here today for uh, what, what what kind of picks we're going to see here. 100%. So, guys, if you can't hear it already, champ select are pretty underway, so we have missed the start of that one, unfortunately. Apparently starting a little bit ahead of schedule for a change. But uh, I believe the two teams playing for the first match on the cast tonight is going to be, or to this morning rather, is going to be Imp Impagani High School versus the Westville Boys, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, sinister myself. Uh, I mean, I'm super, I'm super excited. We've casted these guys throughout the season so far, and uh, there's definitely some up and coming talent within South Africa. So I'd like to see who's able to sort of crown themselves as the quote unquote royalty esports for the for the high school league at least. Yeah, definitely. I'm super excited. And also, being from Durban myself, um, I'm very excited to, to see here my hometown team here, Westville Boys High School, see how they can go. As far as I'm concerned, I think they're a little bit more of a underdog team. They like to... Uh, I'm probably going to have to see if they go for more of a bit of a, a comfort picks here. So, um, at the moment, we also see some really good picks and bans coming through. They're already on the side of uh, uh, Westville. We see that they have... Um, Syndra, which is a super good pick at, pick at the moment. Uh, we see it being flexed. Being a first pick, I think, was a very good thing to do. Um, people can put it as a ADC or mid lane at the moment. Very, very strong. So I think they have some really good picks at the moment for Westville. Yeah, so like you mentioned, pick ban phase underway. Second phase of the ban now coming through. Uh, EHS left and uh, WHS in red. So, I mean, Sinister, dude, we've casted a couple of these, like, teams before. We sort of know the names not too well for the WHS side, in my opinion. Um, I recognize Jacked Up stuff for somebody to watch out for. But, uh, I mean, do you have any educated guesses? Like, not looking at the champs lick, like the picket bands, but uh, any particular team you feel is, is going to be able to take this one? Um, specifically, I think that... Um, I actually think that Westfall has a really good chance at this, and... 
I think so, just because I, the overall their ranking is a bit higher. So if you just look at okay. pure, pure skill, they do seem like they are a bit higher in rank. Um, and also, I've seen a fair bit of consistency from them earlier in the year. So also, one thing to mention is for these high school games, not everyone has all the champions. Some of them are not necessarily new to league, but let's say they haven't been playing for years and years and yeah, years. Yeah, so. start of the career. Let's go with that. Exactly. So sometimes you'll see stuff like, actually, I just noticed that, let's use an example, a uh, hole in my head, which has the Syndra. I said they were going to flex it, but I'm going to give you a little bit of a spoiler alert. First off, he is a Syndra main from what I can see in a solo queue. So it's probably going to go to him. Second off, as I mentioned, you're not going to see super a lot of amount of swaps, I think, unless from what we've seen earlier in the year, they suddenly have uh, raked up a lot of BE, got all of the champions and is ready to swap. But uh, I think actually this is probably more or less what we're going to see from the team. And going further with the picks and bands, you can see Kha'Zix at the moment. I think Kha'Zix actually a very, very good jungler. 100%. I mean, that's uh, something to watch out for in the jungle. Kha'Zix definitely, definitely up there. But so far, the luck in this being that Ekim is Fortune, new new Sona plus Urgot versus the Syndra, Nautilus, Nico, Kha'Zix, and the final lady casual run after Cup will be the Kaiser. Honestly, I feel like Kai's in a lot better of a spot for the ADK role versus Misfortune. Sort of like the, the Kaiser, Zaya, Graven meta to an extent, even after the changes in the patches and whatnot. But uh, comps now locked in. I mean, Sinister, dude, I'm going to ask you the question. We start out every single cast with looking at the two teams purely with the pick and ban phase, ignoring the ranks entirely. Who do you think takes game number one? I definitely think, just if we're, so we're going picks and bans here, I think they have some comfort picks on the side of Westville Boys High. And honestly, no, um, no bias because I'm from Durban. I see a comfort pick already as well for Bunken Boy. He has a 57% win rate on Kha'Zix. That's one of his uh, favorite champions. We have Hole in My Head with Syndra. Like, they, they have comfort <laughs> picks all, right, all around, honestly. And it's not only comfort picks, but a really good comp. They have a front line. They have assassins. They have Nico that can do really good peeling plus a zone with an ultimate. We have a Kaisa that is... One of one in my opinion, one of the best ADCs, pretty much always a uh, priority in uh, pro league as an ADC. So overall, definitely, I'm going to have to give my um, my win just be a paste of picks and bands to Westville Boys High. Okay, and uh, I believe this is the best of three, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, that What's that's the... I don't know for for normally during the year it's best of best one, of one. So yeah, we're gonna I'm gonna probably have to get confirmation on that from the good old production. But for now, I'm going to assume it's probably a best out of three. I mean, standard rules for VS Game, at least for the, the, the non high school league, is best of ones. But that does stand up start on Fridays, and there's usually more teams, if I'm not mistaken. I might just have to double check on that one. But uh, looking at the two teams so far, I mean, that Echo in the top lane or mid lane, most likely mid sing as the Ogot. I'm going to go for TP. Very, very interesting. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know if you know about that that weird interaction where you teleport back or like you, you use the ulti to sort of get back and lane, back to the lane kind of thing. Very very odd stuff you can do with that TP on Echo. Oh, definitely. Also, the the other thing I noticed is that Berserk seems to be like a I don't know if full is the best word, but if I just quickly look at his match history, like he has top three is his, his support Morgana, Thresh, and Rakan, and then you see Echo after that. So. His Echo has a fairly good win rate, but not a super a lot of amount of games. It does seem like he has practiced it. So maybe they are bringing through some last-minute roll swaps, trying to throw the enemy team off, actually. So it seems like it's not his main, but maybe he's practiced it to, to try and see if they do ban out some of his picks. We do see the Morgana was banned, which is one of his mains. So maybe the teams are uh, switching things up a bit, actually. Yeah, 100%. I mean, guys, if you are just joining us now, welcome. It's currently... Uh, getting to the first game of the two-day event, the VS Gaming High School Esports League, myself, uh, Sheepy, as well as uh, co host today, Sinister Smiley. I almost said tonight, holy habits die hard. To be honest, but, I'm uh, really proud of you, Sheepy. Even at VS Championships earlier the year in July, you could not shake that habit. I'm pretty proud of you. Good job. Yep, it's the coffee. It's going to be the coffee. But uh, it, sh it should be a very, very good event. I mean... Do you have any predictions? Do you have like that one team that sort of sticks out for you that you believe is going to take it all the way to that uh, the big W? I mean, at the moment, I think a lot of people have um, some money on uh, Boris Gymnasium or 
uh, actually, what's it called? Uh, Grand, I think it's pronounced Grandly High School. Sorry if I'm butchering that name. I'm not sure how <laughs> how you how you pronounce it, but I think that's a lot how of angry seen. emails and parents. Definitely, uh, I think those two seem very good. Also, there's maybe some upsets from from um, I believe there's two two Paul Ruiz Gymnasium teams. Uh, yeah, a and, a and B. the B side. So apparently, the B team has some potential actually to maybe ha- take some upsets so i'm very I'm, I'm i love upsets so honestly if i can see upsets at any stage I'll, i would be happy to so let's actually see if um that comes through later today or tomorrow i'm not sure when they're playing i have to check the roster again but uh that being said it does seem like we are going to jump into the loading screen so that's a that's a good one and um yeah delay now done uh so the game's awesome but live if you guys don't frequently learn is basically there's a three-minute delay on the game for us to spectate, so there won't be any ghosting or any advantages given to either side. But uh, we'll be able to watch from afar and uh, hopefully we can make the game as understandable as possible if you guys don't actually follow uh, and whatnot. But uh, nonetheless, let's jump back into the rift as we do load into the first game. I mean, should be good. Right, so bot lane, Sona plus Misfortune. AD carry and support versus the Nautilus plus Kaiser. That matchup kind of does favor the Kaiser. Nautilus looking for that all-in. So Sona needs to be super, super careful not to get picked off. So I definitely uh, can see that uh, red side bot lane starting to like sort of snowball, get an early lead. But uh, I mean, looking at the top side, Nico, it's it's Comet Nico. So that's most likely going to be the AP, not the AD. How does that do exactly into Urkhan, in your opinion, Sinister? Uh, I think Nico into Urgot, I mean, think early game, uh, she can harass him a little bit, maybe get some extra farm up, so I feel like it might be too, uh, good for them, it depends how well they can take advantage of it, maybe get some ganking priority in that lane, that would help them a lot, but other than that, I don't know if it's going to um, go very well, if the Urgot can just play it safe enough, get some farm, and then execute hard on her later on, because we all know that those shotgun legs, with Conqueror, it's just so hard to out-sustain. I mean, Nico doesn't have much sustain over the Urgot, and once he throws you over his shoulders and runs circles around you, it's pretty much over. So I think maybe yeah. just try and arrest them early, get some ganking pressure in that lane, because as soon as Nico starts to get a lead with some AP items, I definitely think it could work for, but otherwise, I definitely still think it could favor the Urgot, in my opinion. Gotta watch out for those shotgun knees, like you mentioned, but so far, pretty standard stack, five-man... Cover in the brush, right? Uh, cover in the brush to make sure that the Nautilus I comp does not go for that cheeky invade. But uh, standard spread coming through from WHS as they just cover all the entrances to the map. So I'd like to see the players sort of playing it slow, sort of uh, working way, way in. There's a lot of games going on tonight or this morning, sorry. So there's no reason to force anything. Don't get knocked out in the early phases. Yeah, let's uh, let's not well. let's not pull a subscribe to PewDiePie today. Uh, let's hope yes. that teams has done done research, plays it safe. I mean, actually, it's both both KwaZulu Natal teams against each other, so a little bit of pressure to see uh, who's the better KZN team here, you know? Uh, the rest of the piece, STP, if you guys don't know, we didn't follow that reference. Basically, uh, part of the regular VS Gaming season, not the high school league. It was uh, sort of like an underdog, te underdog team that uh, was expected to do some, some crazy upsets, but they ended up doing... Uh, None, none of that, and uh, kind of a little bit of a choke that got knocked out on the first day, if I'm not mistaken. So, rest in peace. Yeah. But uh, Nautilus was in his first queue, unfortunately. So, nothing too hectic in the bot side. Sona allowed to live for another day. So, two things to note quickly. Um, it seems already like Nico is doing that early harass, trying to force Urgot off the wave, as mentioned before. And another thing to notice is Kha'Zix is on his red side, and red side clear jungles are the best at the moment. You can see both jungles are on their red side. The question is, is Kha'Zix going to maybe go for a scuttle and then maybe straight to top? Get this ganking pressure onto the Nico that I talked about before to help the uh, snowball this early game so she can have a later advantage over the Urgot? Or is he going to go to bot side? You can already see bot side is pushing fairly hard. Nautilus with the hook. Yeah. Uh, speaking of uh, snowballs, uh, Nunu not in the greatest spots right now. Was a lot stronger early in the season, but before she did receive a couple of epic, epic, epic nerfs that did not quite favor him too hard. But uh, speaking of, of changes, oh, hang on. I mean, not bot side. I mean, I, I definitely called it, but at the same time, we actually missed it. It happened literally at the same time. We saw Nunu actually ganking in the mid lane and getting a kill over as well to. Um, 
Mpongeni, guys. So we actually see a kill going both over to Mpongeni and Westwell oh. at the same time. I think we might be a bit desync, but the top side looks like uh, first blood in, as well as the, the mid death. Sinister, I think you're slightly ahead of us in game time. Uh, 3 minutes 45 seconds. Yeah, we're at 3.29. My bad, 30. viewers. <laughs> no, no stress, but uh, 1 to 1 minute top side, a lot of ping is coming through. 3.35. I'm uh, going to pause, pause at 4. I'm going to pause at 4. Okay, perfect. So scan all top side secured now by blue. That's pretty massive. That's an extra camp already for Nunu, a jungler who likes the power farm slash gets super super tanky. Has the aftershock, so potentially play for the Rift Herald and Drake objectives versus the Kha'Zix who sort of wants to get his team ahead slash solo carry, so wants to be creating kill objectives opposed to uh, regular like turrets and uh, camp lead. Uh, oops, apologies, I actually went past the 4 minute mark. I'm gonna pause at 4 or 5. Okay. Let me know when you're ready. I'm ready. Three, two, one. Right, so guys, if you uh, do you watch, oh, hold that thought. A bit of a gang attempt to miss a bumpkin boy. Does get locked out as well, Sinja. So unfortunately, not able to burn anything there. Berserk surviving with his flash enabled. Yeah, and I've uh, already mentioned as well that the Kha'Zix is actually one of his favorite picks at the moment. And he already got that kill in the top lane. Kill that actually not go over to Nico. Nico only getting the assist. So. Uh, we'll have to see if he can use this Kha'Zix to maybe uh, bowl the lead and, you know, because we already mentioned the Champions today that Kha'Zix at the moment is a really, really good pick. And with that kill, will he be able to do something with it? So, uh, like I was mentioning before, guys, League of Legends Spectator is super buggy with regards to uh, syncing up times and stuff like that. It's a uh, sort of feature that Riot Games is uh, somewhat neglected to an extent. Um, Dude, I, I really need that Dota Dota Spectator system that lets you uh, have so many more features such as, you know the Pro View that they have in, in competitive now? We need, we need to make that bolt into the client. Definitely. Also, I think the other thing to take into perspective, uh, we are not at the venue itself at the moment. So I myself am from Durban and I'm not running the stream from my PC. Sheepy is from Cape Town and he's running the stream from his PC. So there's a lot more network activity from his side. So he might have a bit more delay. So we just need to sync up our times maybe just in the beginning of each game. But other than that, we oh. should be good. Not on this bot side. Very, very big trade. The Ignite's gonna be dropped, but unfortunately no damage. One more for auto attack would have been enough, most likely, thanks to that passive. So Kaiser potentially missing that opportunity to get the, uh, the free kill bot. Would have had to just invest that flash. But uh, maybe it's just better to play it safe. Keep the flash. We say make sure you stay uh, safe in lane. But Berserk latitude Paraka on the Syndra. Actually, quite a nice trade. He. I like to see that Berserk isn't just sitting back taking free trades from the Syndra. I mean, with his shield and uh, with his aggressive abilities, he can go in and trade equally. So I think early game. Also with that assist. I mean, at this stage, it's really good of him just to to make sure that he trades back. Uh, just have to watch out. You do see that red side actually has that deep ward there. In the jungle, so well, they actually be spotting out now. I really like this uh, warding from from coming from red side. So Kha'Zix now just resetting on the map, 28 to 30 CS. Nunu taking his chickens. Nothing too hectic. So so far, teams somewhat safe, like we mentioned before. Sort of just feeding each other out. Wants to work out uh, what, the, what the game plan is here. But uh, I mean, both sides scaling somewhat decently. That uh, Ogre going to come super super tanky as well as the Nunu. Hopefully Misfortune having that damage in the late game to potentially carry the rest of the side as uh, Sona scales up as well. But uh, uh, Nunu's snowball attack. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Not too sure about that one. There. We saw the question mark coming through actually from red side onto the Nunu. Hey, Nunu, what are you doing buddy? We can uh, we can see what you're doing there. And we saw what you did. Yep, not let's just uh, give me a cheeky dance. But uh, Nunu potentially hovering around the Drake. Wants to do it but doesn't know where Karzix is so he's going to play it a little bit safe. And uh, perhaps head back to his red buff instead. Actually, interesting enough to note, this Syndra has to be a bit more safe. We saw that she took a free trade from the Nautilus. When you're Syndra, you can't really afford to be caught off like that. It's almost the same as the Yumi. If you if you get caught off in there, uh, I mean, if Kaisa had a little bit more damage in that fight, I'm pretty sure they could have uh, taken the Sona easily. You need to make sure you trade and quickly stand behind the minions when you're done. Because if you, you don't have your abilities up, especially if you don't have your W for a shield, then you are going to... Going to die, it's definitely something that will happen. Oh, so let's nice. speaking of dying, great connection coming through from uh, Pan. Looking to double some damage, the proc gonna be there for the passive as the healers invest in the snipe. Not gonna be there, unfortunately, but very, very good attempt. Yep, and um, I literally, as I mentioned it, and I mean, that's what we, what I talked about, and as I said, it happens. 
So this time the summoner invested by Kaisa, but uh, unable to get the kill. Meanwhile, mid side snowball attempt was so unfortunately Berserk not able to get that locked on. Looks like Wraith the choice crashing snowballs into wall so far, but Sid drop on that uh, old lot of the damage. Here comes the Ogre as well. That's gonna be the second death now coming through the one for one trade, but red side Nico looking to rejoin. Unfortunately, won't get the snare, but uh, a little bit of a back and forth yet again. The one for one trade. Yeah, and it's uh, very good to see. I mean, Empangetni doing not too badly. Really good uh, rotations here from the Urgot. And um, I don't know. It, it feels like it's just Syndra 0-2 now. It's going to be a bit hard for him. I mean, at, at least if Syndra can maybe get an item or two down, she's still going to be really good. Syndra being really good at the moment in the meta. So I, I'm not too worried. It's just, is she going to get there? 100%. I mean, working to work towards that win condition. Mr. Poe in the top side. Uh, Kha'Zix currently sitting on two kills, that's not exactly what you can afford from the side of blue, I mean, once the, like we mentioned before, went through uh, through kill objectives, but uh, Wraith, a little bit of trouble, Kha'Zix expertise coming through right here, the DPS not going to be enough, actually the red tick not there as uh, the return, Berserk rotation, but here comes Sinja. Not too sure if he wants to take that one as it is a bit of a 1v2, but Drake sort of working on his side, lots of damage, Stun coming through, SABC3. Or SAB rather flash and Nautilus not hitting the hook, but let's get a workout it seems. Yeah, Very apparently it was just 200 IQ. Don't hook the Sun Rossi, don't take the kill, but just move forward to slow with the E and then let Syndra have the kill. Repositioning hook, I like it. That's a uh, hole in my head so far. I was going to touch on the fact that uh, hole in my head opted to go for the uh, Ignite. I feel like perhaps a cleanse would have been burned to this matchup. He's playing into an Echo who likes to lock it down, especially with the Nunu. That's a lot of chain CC. Having Ignite, not going to keep you alive. Cleanse, on the other hand, potentially let you sort of work towards that later game powerhouse. I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I definitely agree with you. But also at the same time, we also spoke about Berserk actually having TP. So Berserk is going to have a lot more, I think, roaming and map potential even in the later game. So I think overall Berserk, really good position at the moment. Already backed, has that Hextic, Hextic GLP two kills. And he has, still has TP, which is going to be up in a second. He can either come back to lane and then, you know, get an even hard lead with the with the farm. He's at the moment a bit behind, so maybe it would be worth it to try and get pick up more farm. Or the late game, he can maybe just sit in the side lane and then Ooh, join team fights. So Rumble trash splash blast, the dragon line could be enough for the late heal. Not gonna be able to keep him alive. Tiny game of dropping the ball a little bit there, but uh Sona yet again getting caught out. Like this is that that, that matchup interaction we were speaking about. It's just uh, super super tricky to play this lane as the Sona. Yeah, and I mean they really need to try and play safe in this laning phase. They want to try and get the Sona and the Misfortune to the late game where Sona can lock the team down with the with the ultimate and then Misfortune can ult on top of that positioning being really key in that sense and in this case it just seems like misfortune is struggling with farm you can see 59 c is to 89 and sonar already with two deaths it just seems like this bot lane from Empangeni is just not having a really great time so meanwhile plates pretty intact from both sides i mean so far only mid lane i believe losing a plate four to four so, oh, no, looks like there's going to be another repeat gank bot side. Wraith trying to catch out. No, but unfortunately the flash is going to be available. But Sona Crescendo, Ignite applied Pandragon, a bit of trouble. No flash available. He did invest it, but that beautiful hook going to keep him alive. Meanwhile, top side, Berserk, Mr. Poe, jump. Able to survive a little bit of an early uh, ulti optimistic uh, play from Jacked Up. I mean, I think they just forgot to live out Nico ultimate and invested really hard. But I mean, Nico, like I said, in, in the loading and champ select, really great zoning ultimate to keep people off of your enemy team. And I think it's going to be hard for Mbongeni to do anything once the laning phase ends for this team. I mean, the Westfall still has a really good late game comp with a good front line. And in this case, we also talked about the bot lane having a bit of issues. So it's going to lot of ride of if this Berserk can carry the game hard enough with this Echo. Speaking of carry, big fight coming through. Hang on, you're on a ward, my friend. Berserk taking a little bit of tra uh, uh, trade, looking to go aggressive anyway. Beautifully played, gets the stun. Unfortunately, not able to pull the damage required for the double. Ops the back off, flash available for the re attempt. The flash there is Bumpkin Boy just surviving, dropping the smite for a little bit of health back. The jacked up stuff, holding my head, a bit of trouble. No, no, no. Rift killed, not secured, blue team securing that, so that's gonna be Jack picking them up, plus the Sinjur kill, not looking too good, as they do neutralize that 4-4. Four four. 
And it just seems like Berserk is looking to 1v3 this game. I just talked about Izzy will be able to carry this game with, with the lead he has currently with these skills. And it just feels like the answer is going to be yes. For zones three people off of the Herald. Urgot comes and he picks it up. And meanwhile in the bot lane. Big fight. Uh, Mo able to finish off Sona. Unfortunately, not going to be getting too much back for that. But meanwhile, mid side, Blue pushing the, the, the uh, first turret now down. Only 30 missing, plus a little bit of damage to the second tier. That Rift Herald coming in very, very big. So beautiful rotation coming through from the side of EHS. I mean, it just feels like EHS is making the best rotations here, and that's what's giving them the lead back. You, already, you still see a thousand lead, gold lead over to West for high school. But at the same time, they still have the tower advantage and actually making really good rotations. So I think it's all going to come down to are they going to get to the late game and will West will be able to pull it back? New new. Tapped up bot side. Not successful, unfortunately. But uh, pressure applied nonetheless. So seeing as that tier 1 turret has fallen the mid side, looking to potentially play towards that top or bottom tier 1 turret. Have to see what the rotations have or what, like what rotations are decided upon. Berserk though, super, super aggressive. Seems like he's very comfortable on this Echo and he's showing us what, uh, showing us that he, he's, a, he's a player particular to watch out for in this tournament. I'm, I'm definitely going to say that if, if this is a best of three or even late in the tournament, people are going to have to respect Berserk's Echo a lot more. You can obviously see this is one of his uh, comfort picks. Really, yeah, really punish child of the high school league, if you will. Definitely. Although a good old punished child from, from the sheepy streams, always picking the echo, whether it's jungle, top or mid, it's a, it's a good one. Yep. It's not that, it's uh, the weirdly built full tank Kha'Zix, but uh, looking like so, they're going to be caught out once again, just instantly deleting crescendo, not going to keep you alive for that one, unfortunately. Wraith opt and just the, to back out. Let's see, let's a friend die. That was a very nice pick once again, so the Nautilus coming in clutch. And uh, it's, it's working so far, I mean, our top side, very, very aggressive ult the stopwatch just to buy for some time, does not want that fear beyond death, pop blossom though, lock it down, and able to now walk it away, but here comes mid side, hole in my head, gonna be able to get the ult here, but no damage, the rest of the team here, let's try to keep it alive, as Berserk does finish off the kill, but the chain CC, not letting him recast, and uh, the one for one trade mid side, gonna be going through, and fight not done just yet, beautiful castle, pen dragon. Yeah, they're gonna have to be careful. This guy Zeke does have three kills, and as soon as he gets more items, he only has the um, the Warrior Stalker Blade at the moment. But as soon as he gets more lethality, even this Nunu is gonna have to watch out. It does seem like he is gonna get stronger and stronger as time goes on. At the moment, Red's still struggling to get any towers, while Blue already has that mid tower cracked open, which is very important opening up the map for late game objectives. As it gets later and later, and um, Westfall not getting any objectives, that's going to bite them later on, so I would recommend maybe if they do feel like landing phase is over, just even cracking that over the mid tower will make a lot of difference for them in this game. So it seems like this game is actually very, very close. A lot of back and forth, the constant one for one trades across the map. Both uh, teams sort of looking to play the best of their abilities, especially seeing as this is the first game of the, the tournament. You know, top side, beautiful. Uh, cash coming through. Was the Poe very low? Unfortunately, not the pop loss, but the title Wraith. Not gonna be able to survive yet again the one for one trade, but it looks like uh, jacked up stuff. Will they able to survive? Oh. Really good flash, actually. Just in time for that hook not to land. We all know how Nautilus hook uh, works. If you don't flash fast enough, that hitbox, it will definitely get you. I mean, we all know Riot hit spaghetti code on that. It's the Nautilus Q. Yeah, I mean, Riot Games, the way to balance the Nautilus, so the, the dredge line is uh, give Blitzcrank an extra 100 range right now. There's two champions with super long hooks. So that makes it balanced, correct? Question mark? Oh, definitely. We all uh, we all know that Sheepy also, he likes those Blitzcranks. Not really, so, but cool. Drake, you can be on the map with it. Oh, it's gonna be the next objective on the map rather to be contested by either side. I mean, favor definitely towards EHS with the, the Nunu who's sort of very, very good at taking these objectives. So I'd like to see whether Red Side opts to play around it or just trade it off to potentially pick up maybe the mid to neutralize that uh, turret advantage. It feels like no Drake's taken so far, huh? Yeah, actually, it feels like blue team is slowing the game down a bit. I mean, the thing they had going for them at the moment was they were making really fast rotations, and that's what sort of 
keeping them the foot in the game where red team has the gold lead but they are making really good proactive rotations oh and uh lichen very very cheeky pick in the mid side hold my head now one for five he's the the main target, it seems, the identified point of attack, if you will. And it seems like they are, I don't know, they sh shouldn't be A-ramming, but it seems like they're very indecisive if they want to go for objectives or what they want to do now, because it seems like both teams are sort of realizing that laning phase is starting to end, but they're not sh completely sure about what they want to do. Should they go for objectives? Is it too risky? Will they just stall the game out more? And at this stage, they are committing for the dragon and red team not going to respond. That is a four-man ocean trick attempt at 19 minutes in. Baron on the map in the next minutes and uh, 10 seconds. Kha'Zix like doing the best he can to work away at that uh, mid-tier one. He does pick it up, so like mentioned before, that bit of an objective trade. Kha'Zix now neutralizing the mid tire. Unfortunately, no place available as it is already 19 minutes, but Bumpkin Boy trying to escape with his life. Flashes away. Jacked up stuff. I think that was a good flash. I mean, there's a lot of people rotating at the same time, and we do have Baron spawning in a minute. So we could maybe have seen a very early Baron if they did court off the Nico or the Kha'Zix there. So I think that flash was definitely uh, well-timed. And you can also see that that first lethality item is going to be done for the Kha'Zix soon. So that's going to be something to watch out for. Oh. Cheeky stun coming through. But uh, like you mentioned before, so this is where teams... Uh or newer teams especially start to struggle with Nunu on the hand looking for that attempt he does cheekily walk it between the turret or the dead turret and the wall not able to get that pick but that's a lot of damage Sona now caught out beautiful hook coming through from Pendragon he does engage this fortune though has other ideas big fire breaking out Nunu first kill gonna be going over to the yoga let's pop loss it does come to plus the flash that is massive the four man locked down the double kill on a singer and that looks to be potentially the clean wipe hang on though Bit of a back and forth trade. Two members alive make that one berserk, the last one from the side of the EHS. Big fight on our hands as the stun does connect. Hold my head. Berserk. Mr. Poe. Trade and Sinja, the lone man alive. The uh, I am legend, if you will. And I mean, there's, there's that Sinja power pick that's coming through at the moment. She has one item and sorcery shoes, and she doesn't. Like, Really good, decent amount of damage. She, she got a triple kill out of that fight by just placing some good balls and making sure she ult priority the targets. I mean, there was maybe that little bit of a disconnected fight where Echo basically got a free kill. I mean, if they if they had some more composure there, I think they would have been able to get off without um, Mr. Poe dying on that Nico. Unfortunately, it is a sacrifice they must make, and I think they will still get out positive on that fight. Uh, 13 to 11 kills now, two and one tower up with a gold lead. Um, Wasteful High looking so strong at this moment. Yeah, from zero to hero. Uh, Sinjo was looking a little bit shaky in the knees, but clearly proven herself or himself and uh, able to pick up those uh, those team fight crucial kills. I mean, the game was starting to slowly but surely fall into the hands of the EHS, but uh, WHS not looking to go down without a fight. Nautilus Pendragon, beautiful engage to that team fight, but uh, Tiny Gamer doing the best he can with the, the misfortune. misfortune. Uh, rain. I definitely want to see maybe um, SAB go something a bit more safe next game on the sonar. Just we saw almost him getting caught off for absolutely no reason there in the river. The Nautilus just being too strong for her and she doesn't seem like she knows exactly how to position on a champion. So uh, maybe go for something a bit safer or something that if it gets picked off that's a won't get like killed instantly. You know, it's since sonar is pretty much uh, all or nothing. If you get caught off, you're pretty much dead at this stage. Yeah, it definitely does scale up though, so the later the game goes, the stronger the pick becomes. Maybe what they're going for in this case, but uh, jacked up stuff. Not able to get... Oh, that's gonna cost you. Nuni here on the other hand, here for the counter. Bumpkin boy in a little bit of trouble. See you below. The cheeky, cheeky turn back, but Echo... Wait, Berserk? There it is. Realizes, hang on, Kha'Zix is uh, not where I thought you'd be. Let's pick up the kill. Hold my head, miss position. It's very odd. I mean, I did talk about it in the champ select a little bit about how how strong I feel Urgot is, and it just shows there. Um, Urgot doing a lot of work in this team fights. The last team fight he actually oh, no misfortune. Oh, blue sign setup coming through, so it's not gonna be SAB getting caught up this time. It will be the other uh, member of the bot side, the tiny squad. 
But uh, Jack up stuff super low. The reposition from Kaiser, that killer instinct coming through as Jack does go down. Might pick up the first kill, the T5 mid on Nautilus, doing as much as he can to sort of keep the blue side at hand. And uh, Kaiser now dead. So the one for one, make that the double, the punished child. Berserk coming through the flash away from Pendragon, but the fight's not a touch just yet as that micro uh, Nautilus dredge line not going to keep him alive. The triple kill. And uh, that is not what you can afford. Overextending, taking too much of a fight, and uh, they're getting caught up for it. Yeah, it's, I see some recurring themes here. We've seen it earlier in the year. There's a lot of these high school teams that has like, they, they have like, let's say average people in the team. Uh, that m some of them might even be new to League of Legends because you're getting a high school team together. And then you always have that one or two people in the team that plays League of Legends a lot and you can really see it. Berserk seems like that person. I mean, he's just 1v5ing the enemy team at this stage. The boss yeah, saying... You could not walk up like that, my dude. Pumpkin point picking it up, but uh, you were saying... Yeah, and that's uh, that's one of the points also I was trying to make is some, some people, it just seems like they don't play enough. They don't know exactly how to position. And in this case, you can see Berserker 1v5ing. So he's he's really strong on the team, but Sona and Musfortune struggling oh. a bit in this bot lane. Dredge line jacked up stuff. Not going to be able to hit Bumpkin Boy with that uh, Fear Beyond Death. Does connect onto Mott the 80 carry instead, but unfortunately no execute proct. But uh, Nunu though, repositioned using the Pumpkin to try to get the pick. That is a three-man stack that you cannot afford. Nicely read though. Pen realizing his team's gonna get caught out. Let me just turn it and see if I can potentially allow the rest of my side to get away. Sinja for the backup. But I can really respect this Nautilus so far playing with uh, the intentions of the team, like a good support should. But uh, touching back on that topic you mentioned, definitely they are sort of uh, diamonds amongst the rough. One or two players in particular per team, but sort of watch out for the, the, the peanuts. Uh, in the group, if that makes sense. Yeah, Could definitely. And I'm, I'm excited for that. I love seeing this type of thing where you can see some players shining and has some potential. Because at the end of the day, these are the people that that might be the people that will join royalty. Yeah, they're the guys and, who and feed, the, the, they the feed into the, the local scene, so 100%. Exactly. So they, they're young. They can still they still have a lot of time to, to improve themselves, uh, you know, reach their potentials. And I'm, I'm, I love to be along for the ride and see what's going to come from these people. Yeah. That's why I'm always more than happy to, to get involved with the high school esports legal guys, the casting and whatnot, because uh, it sort of gives the local scene an opportunity to watch out for potential talent to, to nurture into some of the, the regular season. So yeah, definitely one or two players that have uh, worked their way in. I really like the... I don't know if this is maybe someone from uh, Impangeni that's having a lot of good uh, rotation calls. Or who the shot caller is for them, shot but callers, it yeah. feels like that is the, really their strong point at this stage of the game. They're struggling a lot with these uh, these team fights and macro plays, and that's where Berserker comes in mostly for team fights. But when it comes to plays on the map, uh, getting objectives, making rotations, they're actually really, really decent. And then you see they made rotation to the spot, they got that tower, they made that early play onto the uh, Rift Herald, got mid tower, and I mean they're literally keeping their foot in the game. Basically, only with rotations and depending on Berserk for the team fights. Yeah, like you mentioned, Berserk currently 10 to absolutely godlike performance so far. Looking for those 1v2s, does not care. Very, very comfortable in that champion. Potentially should be banned away in the next uh, champ select, at least, or any future games against the side of uh, EHS. But uh, Gold Department currently is sitting on that 10k versus the second highest, I believe, and uh, just under 9. So. A lot of pressure, a lot of weight on the shoulders of uh, Berserk and his Echo. This is a bit of a dangerous one. I like the, the retreat call from red side. They're going for a cheeky like uh, mid lane C, just not ideal versus that comp. They've got that Berserk flank, too many opportunities, too many like uh, dark corners to an extent to watch out for. So, I mean, uh, the, the, the dark corners are where you find the, the, the Joker, the hidden menace. The, the guy who's going to crush the rest of your dreams and take that uh, sweet, sweet victory away from you. But uh, Baron as well on the map. Nunu side comp definitely favored with regards to that objective. Cannot afford to go for that 50-50 flip. Bumpkin Boy will not win at that smite war, especially seeing as it is level 13 or 13. The Drakes not helping too much actually for these uh these late games. I mean we have Ocean and the Cloud Drake. 
which is going to sort of help. There's sort of more of a laning, laning phase slash rotation drake. So maybe if they get more cloud drakes, they can push those uh, rotations off uh, that I've been uh, bragging about earlier. So maybe that will help them. But at the moment, it just seems like both teams are very unsure about what to do. And I mean, this is a problem with most South African teams. They struggle to realize what they should be doing late game. They only take opportunities if it's not too risky. So you can see both teams really just trying to see, can I maybe pick someone off? Is Sona going to miss position again? Um, as we see also even Red team giving up free farm to the tower there. It's sort of, they don't know where to be or what to do. And that's something they need to really work on. Definitely comes with time, but uh, it makes some entertaining back and forth legal lens nonetheless. But uh, as we can see, Blue Side sort of playing towards Baron, looking to control vision and uh, you need to be careful, even if you are a tankly, tanky, tanky, nautilus, not to get caught on echo. Sort of just chilling in the brush, uh, up to two, sort of watching out for one of the squishies, so not going to pull the trigger onto the nautilus just yet. But uh, need to be careful with the buddy system, I guess. Hashtag camping. How do you, how do you expect this, this game to go? I mean, any, any predictions at this point? Do you feel like uh, there's going to be a massive upset? At this point, anyone's game, in my opinion. No, no, definitely anyone's game. I mean, from the start, it was both teams of so are fairly silver ranked. Um, we have comfort picks on diff on certain people, and at this stage, I think if I have to make a prediction on how it's going to end, someone's going to get caught off, and that's going to decide the game. At this stage, you can just see everyone is just clearing waves and staying staying safe. Uh, what I don't like is that we have TPs up. We have a TP on Nico. We have a TP on Echo. And nobody's using it. A ramming, they're literally just looking for a pick at the moment where yeah. you can see top lane is pushing into the tower, bot lane is halfway through. Send your people with TPs to the side lane, get that pushing, and that will force people to rotate. And then you can work off maybe with good vision control, making a pick and then getting the objective. But at this stage, not doing anything, Blue Side is just going to go get free vision on Baron or wait for a pick. I mean, it's just. Yeah, they're, they're stacking. But uh, Drake seems to be the objective for red side. Will that be a free Baron? They do have the gang, they do have vision on the Baron. Top. They will know. The rotation is there. No control the wards. Drake. They Counter have, rotation. Yep, they have the time to rotate. This is not going very fast, and they don't have any control wards on them. The 50 50 Baron now has 6,000 houses. The rest of red side come to collapse. This is not what she can afford. It is a new new though. And uh, Red Turn actually falling, but here comes that curtain call. Mr. Pope, Pop Blossom. Persona now dead. First one out, Karzik's trading. That means no jungle left. That's the Echo Double. Ogre up coming in clean. And looks like Blue Side is able to clean up this fight beautifully as the Baron is now continued. Nunu is still on the objective. So despite the perfect situation, the exact point where you wanted to go for the counter, not working out, biting off more than can chew, and uh, just overextending. And it seems like they might actually get the Baron over here, the redemption from the Sona is going to make sure they are, they are healthy enough. So, blue side securing the Baron quite easily. Not much you can do as a Syndra versus that, uh, that Nunu smite consume combo. But, uh, I mean, is that is that the way that we predicted to come through? We expected some sort of pick before the objective, but it looks like the fight's not just done yet. Wraith getting that locked down, and uh, Echo, Berserk, not quite able to finish off the damage, but... Uh, like I was mentioning, the, the bit of a trade. Interesting, interesting decision to go for the Drake there. Um, It's arguable to say that, that it sort of worked, but didn't in the sense that they had the right rotation because they got the objective, then were able to go into the Baron contest. The contest itself not working out though. I, I, there's one thing that keeps on standing to, out to me every single time about m -Punk game. I just looked at the replay to make sure that I saw my eyes right. Someone is making very decisive, decisive choices on their team. They decided to walk to Baron, waited out a few seconds, stack. They saw nobody coming, and they saw them going towards Dragon's side. Someone made a clear decision. Yes, yeah, so let's start a Baron. Call, let's start Baron. When Baron was started, they continued doing Baron up until they made the rotation. As soon as Westville stepped up to the Baron, someone told them, go off Baron, we're going to team turn around and fight yeah, them. Yeah, very good communication. Very, very good communication and shot calling from Mpangeni. And if they continue to do this, even though they have this very strongly bot lane and like, uh, okay doing jungle and Slight top lane. disadvantage in gold. Yeah. Definitely. It just seems like they might take this game if they just keep on doing this type of shot calling and... Yeah, Baseball doesn't have an answer for it. That's something that you definitely don't see enough of, especially at this league or this uh, this level of uh, 
of your gameplay if you want to play is sort of generally the bronze sort of the gold elo you tend to lack that shot call especially i mean honestly my guess would either be berserk or wraith for that uh, that shot, call, shot calling position reason being is that uh Dunu is a jungler that sort of focuses around objectives, he wants to play the map, he doesn't want to keep fighting, so that means that the player itself needs to know how to play the map in order to effectively play the champion at piloted, which uh, tells me that he most likely would be good at making these calls slash the macro, but uh, at the same time, Berserk showing us that he's very very comfortable with his Echo, he's an experienced player in uh, this sense, or in, in comparison to the rest of the... Uh, the general players, so perhaps himself having it will bring in a little bit of extra knowledge to the table. And again, we have a TP up on Urgot, we have a TP up on no, no. Echo. Gets the pick onto head. A whole little bit of trouble. Lockdown gonna be there. The shutdown is there as well. And uh, misfortune with the Zoni ultimate says no friends, you're not allowed to step up to this contest. Tier 2 turret now down. And uh, Nunu receiving a little bit of a present from Pen. Unfortunately, nobody able to capitalize off, off that as he is a super, super tanky boy. Uh, Plant Blossom plus Crescendo competition, SAB. Getting a little locked up, but Bumpkin Boy finishing off Wraith tier 3 turret still available as now. Both Nico as well as Kaiser dead. Make that the uh, return double kill for Kha'Zix. The tier 3 turret falls and the inhibitor is now exposed. I believe that the players are actually lagging a little bit from what I can see in chats. Yeah, it seems like there is coming through some communication. Maybe admins will have a look at that later, but it seems like it doesn't matter too much though, because I mean, Pangeni is doing really well with that Baron and it does seem like they are going to push down these uh, Nexus Sours and possibly take the game here off of this play. Yeah, had last uh, saving great opportunity. Looks for the kill of Berserk, but not gonna be able to get that as the beautifully timed ultimate comes through as the, uh, actually hold that on the double kill. Looking for that trade, but the shotgun and he's gonna be doing too much work. Uh, the Winnings though, trying to finish off that last little damage. Still the half plus a red buff, keeping him alive. And it seems like they would just have a last bit of breath in this game. Will West will be able to do anything for the, with this now. Is this going to be that last, that last second and like minuscule health from Westfall that's going to keep them in this game? We'll have to see. I don't know. Personally, it seems like Empangenia has this in the bag. At the, will someone do XPK? Will they just team up i mean at this stage the, i hope they don't do anything too rash and throw the game off of this that's something that will definitely uh not be that something great to see to, something to note though is that uh, both berserk and jacked up stuff teleports available so i would have liked to have seen a little bit more uh sort of sweeping and uh, controlling with pink slash vision of the nexus it's on literally a sort of health you need to be able to ensure that there's not going to be a backdoor TP if you do extend for this uh, Elder Drake, which is now sort of been watered and opted to back off of. Not worth the attempt with the Nunu alive. So it's uh, not an easy place to come back for from the side of Ren, but definitely do both. There is, it, it's sort of like a EHS game to throw at this stage. Yeah, definitely. I mean, they, they are literally a few basic attacks away from winning this game and at the moment they are starting up the elder dragon and red is not going to seem like they are going to look for a contest we see some recalls even starting up from red and if they lose this i don't think they will be able to could defend against the elder baron uh, elder dragon and empowered team so basically elder drake making your team let's go with about five to ten times stronger depending on how many drakes that you have so they're gonna be hitting a lot harder which means that it should be quite an easy close for them, I, I like the the fact that they have opted once again not to go for just that mid lane push, but rather shove in the bot wave instead, which is a very very clever decision. So once again, nice little macro call coming through from the side of of, of blue. Compliments to whoever is their shot caller, but uh, should quite easily be able to look for a potential dive under this tier two tower as it is super low, and this is not an objective that red side can afford to defend. So they should just be backing off and playing for that turtle, especially against the elder. Clearing wave and avoiding fights is the best that they can. And they're doing the right thing here, going to the bot lane. And I mean, I talked about not doing anything rash, and I think this is the least rash thing you can do. Not just aim a ramming it down mid. You see that the super minions is going to crash mid. That forces cool. two people to rotate. Gonna rotate, but uh, not like that. Nautilus sort of playing very aggressive wants to try and look for some sort of flank perhaps but not what you should be doing in this case a pick is a pick sure but versus an elder drake enhanced team means that these team fights are uh, a lot less likely to succeed even with that advantageous pick 
Yeah, and also the one thing to notice here, this Urgard is actually becoming a actually a really bit of a raid boss. He doesn't have any damage items, but he he has that uh, GA finish now, and he has so much sustain with Conqueror. He's not going to get picked off. He's way too tanky. I think that was almost like a waste of the Nautilus oh, ultimate. Big pick coming through. Mr. Poe can be brought back in that field beyond death. Nice. He played make that the, the doubles berserk finishes of Kaiser. That's now two members of Red Side now dead as a uh, jacked up stuff. Looking at Rain Terror. Does not care if he's low health. He's going to be that front line of the team. Needs to try close this game on. That's going to be Kha'Zix now dead as well. And Nexus under siege. Pen Dragon cannot afford uh, to keep him off that Nexus. And this is going to be a, a game over to Impangeni High School. Well played to them. Uh, first game of the day. And I will definitely hope we'll de see this, these teams again later today. And I'm pretty excited for what the rest of the day is going to be going to hold. I'm hoping that these uh, high school teams uh, practiced and are ready to go. I'm, I'm happy about that. That was actually a quite fun game to cast, not going to lie. Yeah. Oh, my, my, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it is the best of three. So I feel like there would be another game. But let's just double check on that, guys. But, uh... I mean, Sinister, we just we just watched the first game to start out the the, the two-day event. Uh, other than the players lagging and potentially one or two missed picks here and there, overall thoughts on, on the, the uh, start out? I mean, I think that looking at the damage graph, I'm a little bit disappointed at the bot lane of, um, of Wasteful. It feels like they were doing so well in that bot lane and forcing off so many times the sonar going back they they got kills but it just seems like the kaisa didn't use her lead uh she had cs advantage she had items that she had all of the advantages she but she did less damage than the nico top lane and it just that's definitely a red flag to me first off and second off the syndra that was not doing so well in the mid lane had the most damage in the whole game she did more than the echo and that was the champion that was struggling in that team. So it feels like there's a little bit of problems that they need to sort out in Wasteful, not only with shot calling, but they need to, if, if a person gets a lead, that, that person needs to almost, uh, you know, use that lead. Otherwise, it's just going to happen what happened this game. And that's probably one of the reasons why they, why they lost and why they struggled so much. And other than that, I, I think that um, Impangeni, whoever is the shot caller, first of all, keep that guy and, uh, and give him a high five. Uh, because you can see that Sonar, Nunu, and uh, okay, well, Nunu being a tank, so it doesn't matter that much. But the bot lane struggled a lot, and Berserk and uh, that top lane Ur got uh, jacked up stuff, doing a lot of work for that team. 100% honorable mentions. Uh, nonetheless, guys, we will see you in a bit for the next match. But uh, in case you guys didn't miss any of the action, I'm going to send you to those post game highlights. So yeah, check you guys in uh, just a few. Ertega needs the lockdown, won't get it unfortunately. Has the Sedge ulti though. I think he probably could have actually killed Rakan there if he played it correctly. What are you doing though? Ref Child Sport on the ward. What was Vans are contesting. Scuttle does get secured by Rain. Reposition, Vanzor. Flashes over the trap. Lots of damage, just short required. Just need one more auto, one more key punk. Both walking blindly, does get oh. caught off. Rain speaker getting caught off. Sexy people with the death is a flay, a box combination. Once the, like we mentioned before, went through uh, through kill objectives, but uh, Wraith, little bit of trouble. Kha'Zix expertise coming through. Once the, like we mentioned before, went through uh, through kill objectives, but uh, Wraith, little bit of trouble. Kha'Zix expertise coming through right here. The DPS, not going to be enough. Actually, the red tick not there as uh, the return berserk rotation. But here comes Sinja. Not too sure if he wants to take that one as it is a bit of a 1v2, but... Once the, like we mentioned before, went through uh, through kill objectives, but uh, Wraith, little bit of trouble. Kha'Zix expertise coming through right here. The DPS, not going to be enough. Actually, the red tick not there as uh, the return berserk rotation. But here comes Sinja. Not too sure if he wants to take that one as it is a bit of a 1v2, but...
once the, like we mentioned before, went through uh, through kill objectives, but uh, Wraith, a little bit of trouble, Karzik's expertise coming through right here, the DPS not going to be enough, actually the red tick not there as uh, the return, Berserk rotation, but here comes Sinja, not too sure if he wants to take that one as it is a bit of a 1v2, but once the, like we mentioned before, went through uh, through kill objectives, but uh, Wraith, a little bit of trouble, Karzik's expertise coming through right here, the DPS not going to be enough, actually the red tick not there as uh, the return, Berserk rotation, but here comes Sinja, not too sure if he wants to take that one as it is a bit of a 1v2, but Once the, like we mentioned before, went through uh, through kill objectives, but uh, Wraith, a little bit of trouble, Karzik's expertise coming through right here, the DPS not going to be enough, actually the red tick not there as uh, the return, Berserk rotation, but here comes Sinja, not too sure if he wants to take that one as it is a bit of a 1v2, but once the, like we mentioned before, went through uh, through kill objectives, but uh, Wraith, a little bit of trouble, once the, like we mentioned before, went through uh, through kill objectives, once the, like we mentioned before, went through a uh, through kill object with the with the with the farm. He's at the moment a bit behind, so maybe it would be worth it to try and get pick up more farm and, or the late game. He can maybe just sit in the side lane and then join team fights. Rumble trash bash plus the trash line could be enough for the late heal. Not gonna be able to keep him alive. Tiny game of dropping the ball a little bit there, but uh, Sona yet again getting caught out. Wraith trying to cash out no, but unfortunately the flash gonna be available. But Sona crescendo. Ignite applied Pendragon, a bit of trouble, no flash available, he did invest it, but that beautiful hook gonna keep him alive, meanwhile topside, Berserk, Mr. Poe, jump, able to survive, a little bit of an earlier uh, ulti, optimistic, uh, very aggressive ultimate, Wraith, try, Wraith, try, Wraith, Wraith, trying to catch out, very aggressive, the best of the going for the match. And the double kill on a Sinja, and that looks to be to the clean one. The lockdown won't get it, unfortunately. As the Sedge ulti though. I think he probably could have actually killed Rakan there if he played it correctly. What are you doing though? Ref Channel Sport on the ward. Fans are contesting. Scuttle does get secured by Rain. Reposition, Vanzel. Flashes over the and trap. Lots of damage. Just short required. Just needed... Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are here for game two Mpangini High School versus Wasteful Boys High School. It seems like we. Oh, back on the same side again, unless I'm looking at the wrong thing here on the on the um, spectator client. But it seems like Berserk and Mbangeni is on the left side again, if I'm correct. So it doesn't seem like the team swapped around and they opted in to go back onto the sides that they were previously on. So interesting enough, we did see in game one, if you guys missed it, even from the highlights, Mbangeni having some really, really good rotations that game. Uh, getting some early game plays onto Rift Herald, getting some towers down, and just overall making really good uh, shot calling and Berserk and top lane jacked up stuff, doing a lot of work on those uh, Echoes and Urgots. And we already see straight off the bat, Wasteful is going to be taking that Urgot and Echo off. And I mean, at, at this stage, it is, I think, something that the winning team has to, can just sort of do what they were doing the previous game. They are one game up, so they can afford to maybe change up their comp here and at this stage they will have to because this has been banned out so it's going to be interesting to see what they're going to pick up this time yeah i definitely definitely agree with that echo no got banned as well as the not list not listing some very very good work and uh getting that that sonar pick but uh, it looks like we have the the eddy carry harbor very very dangerous to pick a twitch or um oh no okay it's gonna be lissandra i like that i prefer the the uh non ad pick if you're not going to go for that standard kaiser zaya combination the priority picks but uh looks like you ban his uh not unless he takes the pike instead another champion that's sort of been terrorizing the rift recently so i like i can respect that pick otherwise it could potentially be that mid lane pike which was uh oh. nerfed, but still discussed in the op sheepy there's your where's that where's that going there's dude? your where's mouth fight dude there's your mouth fight it's it's there you guys missed it. Uh, Shivi is on the is on the diamond hunt to try and get Malphite jungle to diamond, and we have it here. I'm I'm gonna be I'm hoping that that's a Malphite in the jungle, uh, just due to the fact that first off, I think think that they have, um, in this elo at least, definitely it's going to make a, a big difference. You just build full AP Malphite, and in the late game, you can just alt onto if if, um, 
Impongani is too squishy. That's just going to be easy easy things for, for Malphite to deal with. Yeah, so you predicted the Malphite jungle. Do you feel like they're going to perhaps flex that to top or mid lane? I mean, whatever is adv adv advantageous for them, but I definitely think that Malphite jungle at the moment is very, very strong pick, and I, yeah. I think it's worth doing it. I mean, like you like you said, I, I definitely, definitely think that's a very good pick for the first one. It like... Uh, the potential for flexing at last for it to be locked in early without any like advent well, any advantage being given over with regards to the draft to the other side. But uh Zinza Lissandra and Miss Fortune. I guess Lissandra is sort of like a flex as well in the sense that she can be flexed in mid and top. But uh Miss Fortune on the other hand as well as the Justana. Most likely AD carry, although with the reason uprising of those Justana mids. I'd be very surprised if they did pick it though. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it can still be flexed, so that's probably why they did pick it this early on, so they can maybe flex it over to the mid lane if they don't like the bot lane matchup. That being said, they're going again for the misfortune in the bot lane. I don't think it's... I mean, there is better picks, but I think for the way that they are playing, in that bot, in that previous game, if it was any other ADC, I think that would have been uh, much... I don't want to say necessarily useless, but even a behind misfortune can have really good... Just with positioning, you can have great ultimates and still make a, a, a difference with that enemy. pick. Other yeah. than, let's say, having a, a Vayne, for example, uh, that is very behind. I mean, that champion won't do anything if you're behind, where misfortune can still do something. So very good from behind type of pick. The question is, I really hope they try and uh, replace the Sonar. They did ban out Morgana again, so that's not going to get to be something that they can Weak take as a safety pick. Shadows. But maybe Fear replacing it with maybe like them. a tank would be good, especially seeing as they are lacking a little bit of tankiness in their team at the moment. Death that misfortune, late game slash team flight potential. The Sinjin locked it again. Uh, was a little bit shaky in the early stage, but nice little comeback uh, towards the later stages. So the Syndra pick once again, hole in my head's default go-to, so if it is open, you most likely will take it. Blitzcrack hover, extra 100 range, it was added two patches back to see if that makes a difference. Bit of an interesting one though, he kind of counted himself picking the, the Blitzcrack into the Tristana due to that interaction. Do you want to elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, so I don't know, it is a bit of a hard one to pull off, um, even for, if you're if you're really good with the Tristana, maybe, but even on our ping, you have to be very good at listening for the audio cue, it's all about listening for when the grab actually lands, the hook has to land, if you jump before the hook lands, and the hook still lands, you will be pulled, but if you wait for the, the audio cue of the, of the grab, and then jump, it will actually negate the Blitzcrank jump, so that's a really hard one to pull off something you sort of need to practice and be very comfortable on just not to do so i have to look out for that one but otherwise i mean even if you do get grabbed at least you can jump away so all around i think Tristana is not too bad for this blitzcrank the only thing that i'm happy about is at least they have the blitzcrank now blitzcrank being much more safer than the sonar so if blitzcrank gets caught off it's not the end of the world i mean he has a mana shield so you can just walk it off it's actually in my opinion a better pick for their comp so team comes now locked in a little bit AP heavy on the side of, of red. I like the Garen pick. Garen buffed this, uh, this patch pretty hard, so I'd like to see how he does go for... Uh, wait, hang on. Please no. Don't be a Garen jungle. Please swap with Malphite. What are you doing? I don't know, maybe... Take are back. We, are we just seeing a late swap? Maybe they're doing runes and then gonna swap? Fingers crossed. Don't, okay. don't do it to us like that, guys. We can't have such a spicy pick. I mean, maybe it's a thing now. I have not seen it, though. And uh, six seconds left to quickly switch out that Garen and Malphite. Nope, it looks like it's gonna be the Garen jungle. Here we go, dude. I mean, it's not something we expected, but it's there. I just want to point out as well that I feel like <laughs> the uh, Impangini's team comp feels weird to me. They have that Trinomir top lane. Uh, will they be able? I feel like felt like they solo queued, uh, not solo queued, but they ARAMed a lot the previous game. So they can't really do that with a Trinomy. He sort of struggles a lot within team fights, especially due to the fact that they have like a Vladimir and a Malphite. They have a lot of things to to sort of peel the Trinomy off. So if if they go for those team fights like they did the previous game, Trinomy is not going to be very good for that. I really want to see him in the top lane or bot lane when it comes to late game split pushing. So again, like the last game uh, on that Nico, I feel like the Trinomy, if they can get him ahead and make sure he is going to force more than one rotation so let's say he's too strong to deal with uh not only the v vladimir or the malphite they have to send over two or even more people to deal with them in the top lane that can force some rotations and then they can sort of work off getting objectives off of that 
Yeah, so uh, trying to be a decent spot into uh, Vladimir though. Vladimir tends to want to sort of verse AP dependent champions. So most likely would be Lissandra mid, trying to be top. Potentially could go for that cheeky swap to make sure they have the matchups that sort of favor them. Uh, I don't think trying to be wants to play into Malphite. I don't think Lissandra wants to play into Vlad. So if they can get the Lissandra versus Malphite and trying to be a versus Vlad combination, that could quite work uh, in their favor. But we'll have to see what happens with regards to that. Uh... Actually, wait, hang on. It's Malphite support. My mistake. It's Vladimir and Syndra. Unless the hole in my head is no longer the middle laner, which I highly doubt. So, Malphite support. Sort of like uh, a low rank expertise in the sense that it works quite well towards the low like, ends of the ladder. But uh, the higher up you go, the more you're going to be punished for it. So, it definitely, definitely could work in this situation, in my opinion. Uh, Blitzcrank, however. Needs to watch out post 6 not to hook the Malphite, the, the cheeky, I'm gonna stand in front of your hook to get the, the free engage combination. Yeah, the but, other uh, thing that I also need to point out here is I was just talking about them having these uh, sideline pressures with the Trinomir, but not only the Trinomir, Lissandra also has TP, and they have not one single TP on the side of Wasteful Boys, and that's a that's a little, of a, little bit of a uh, exclamation mark to me on... On any competitive level, it almost feels like they're, uh, they're pulling sort of a tugger here, and there's just too much solo queue going there. There's, there's no way they can make rotations or even pressure side lanes. Trimmy is just going to have a free... If he can go to a side lane. If someone matches him, they can do Baron. How will they... Immediately, they can just do Baron with that call. There's no there's no way they would be able to answer that. If they send someone to a side lane, Mbongeni has free Baron. Yeah, I mean, Vladimir, it's very, very odd or uncommon to see and ignite on Vladimir. Tends to want to go for that TP as he is sort of a late game skating champion, so needs an opportunity to sort of get back into the lane during laning phase to prevent himself from falling behind. But not this Vladimir's the pose looking to fight. He wants to take that early aggression to your Lissandra or potentially Trinomir, but we'll find out shortly as we do jump into the rift. But, uh,. Looking at game number two, if you guys did miss it, EHS and Blue managing to take the, the, the first uh, game quite uh, quite nicely. Uh, I don't think it was uh, too much of a stop. It was a very, very uh, back and forth, one for one trading the entire time. So good, uh, good job to both sides. Unfortunately, like we mentioned, the macro a little bit on a higher level for uh, the side of, uh, of Blue. So, do you feel like uh, game number two is going to go any differently, Sinister, or is this going to be that clean two for naught, in your opinion? To be honest, even though I, I sort of like the the Syndra still in this in this comp from um, Westfall, the fact that they don't have TP is is definitely a problem to me. They're going to have to win the solo queue game pretty hard, in my opinion, and I I don't I don't know. It's it's going to be a hard one. And we already saw that Impangeni has good macro. And with two TPs up against zero, how, how are they going to manage this macro? Someone from, from Wasteful Boys are going to have to uh, pull everyone by the hair and be like, you have to be in this lane now, you have to do that. There's going to be some very good calls from it, Wasteful to, to answer that. Speaking of which, let's see what happens. They have the Blitzcrank, so I'm expecting that cheeky five-man rotation. Uh, the invade last game, we saw five-man stacks to sort of count the Nautilus, but in this case, most likely would go on to the offense instead. Malphite, need to be careful, my dude. Uh, as uh, jacked up stuff. Here it Mo is. Mo, the flash hook potentially. No. Unfortunately, Blitzcrank not leading the charge means that you won't be able to get that hook even if he looks for it with that extra 100 range. But that's a little bit of a miscommunication off the bat, in my opinion. Yeah, that's uh, that's definitely a very good call from uh, from Westfall. They know Blitzcrank is there. You, you actually, in this patch, cannot afford to get anywhere near Blitzcrank this early into the game. You will definitely get hooked. Right, so something to keep up, uh, keep your eye on rather is uh, Bumpkin Boy and his uh, metal breaking Garen jungle. At least he has the, the 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 cool skin for it, so at least he's got the the style on his side. Oh, definitely, and also just a reminder, Sheepy, to make sure you fix the scoreboards and maybe turn jungle timers on. Uh, I believe this is correct. Is I was uh, mistaken? Did they not switch sides? Syndra or? is not in your mid lane, and you don't have jungle. On. Oh, right, right. Yeah, I yeah. thought you meant the top. I thought you meant the top. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, th I already fixed it my side. I think it was just delayed, perhaps. Okay, but, cool. Uh, what's your in game time? Yeah, then, uh, that's the next thing I was going to mention. My in game time at the moment is one minute fifty. 52, 53, 54, 55. Yes, actually, we are synced. Lovely. Would you Perfect. look at that, Riot? Thank you. Would you look at that? But uh, yeah, game number two, guys. Let's go. Telcom vs Gaming High School Esports League Finals. 
players and teams have been taking part in uh, in, in, in the tournament or the league rather for many a month at the stage. Been happy to cast a lot of the games actually. So uh, nothing too new here, but I believe they are at the physical event like the VS Gaming uh, regular finals that happened uh, in was it was it September? When, when was finals again? October? Uh, no, uh, for, 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 for regular August. championship finals? Oh, that July, is a actually. cheeky hook. What? Holy dude. SAP showing us that he's very comfortable on that. Don't put it back in the center of that. Uh, hook the stars off, but like you were mentioning. Um, yeah, I was just saying that it's, uh, yeah, the normal championships was in end of July. And uh, yeah, also touching on the fact that casting for these high school games, teachers, please let's uh, let's not have ga games scheduled at 1 p.m. so we can also cast them. I did. It is what it is. I mean, it's understandable. We finish school, want to get the game done, uh, especially if there's homework to do, etc. So that is one of the uh, one of the weird parts of casting high school esports league is that they're at very very different and odd times. One o'clock, three o'clock, you name it. So we do manage uh, to catch as many of them as possible, but. Uh, Nonetheless, yeah, things I believe the, the high school league is also best of one, which is very odd in my opinion. It's not sort of understandable. At, the, at least it's not best out of two like the Irish league. I mean, got that going for us. Uh, honestly, I I like the best of two the system because best of three is can at times, especially if forty minutes games of pop go on for a little bit too long. Best of two, two guarantees that the games will be done at a certain time. I mean, I guess um, that is true. I like the point system as well, so perhaps consider the point system slash uh, best of two for the future seasons. But uh, unless Garen top, we're looking to try and get that first gank or finds Trinomir. I mean, Garen kind of countering Trinomir to an extent, so if he was top lane, could have potentially won that matchup. Oh, SCB. Zoning hook. It seems like they really like these top laner. Uh, Mr. Poe likes his AP top laners. Going Nico last game. Not doing too badly at it. Actually, fairly decent. He got a lot of uh, pressure from jungling at on the top lane, and he managed to deal with it fairly effectively with that Nico ultimate. Um, the same thing can apply here to Vladimir. He has that pool. So, I mean, I think he, he likes these AP top laners, which he can play very safe on. If he gets ganked, he just pulls straight out, and I mean, it will be okay. I don't think Zhen Zhao would be able to have too much kill pressure on him in this lane. Alright, so game pretty slow so far. Nobody forcing anything too much. So, once again, just going back to that safe laning phase. The ward not placed by Blitzcranks. Can be watching out for that Garen. Um, and my guess would be that Garen sort of power farming to that level 6 uh, Demacia. So I shouldn't see him, but Ignite from top, Mr. Poe, jacked up stuff, has that full rage bar, does use it before the last attack, the flash in, not gonna be there, does result in the kill nonetheless, I don't know whether that was played cleanly, or whether there was a little bit of luck on his side, but it does go in favor of, uh, oh, hold that thought, Mott, bot side, lots of damage, Flash available does burn, unfortunately Tiny Gamer able to survive, but here comes Mott, does not care if you're under Tiny Ghost with the hop, skip, jump, the double, jump, trying to walk away from Lycan at this stage with the Flash invested now, and that's going to most likely be the shutdown in favor of uh, Blue, so 2-1. to one. Yeah, I think that's uh, not too bad for over for Blue side, I mean they do get the, the um, return kill. That being said, Tristana is going to pick up a BF sword off of that, so that's going to be pretty good. It's normally really nice to see when Tristana comes back to uh, with a BF sword to lay, and that's actually a quite a big uh, spike for her almost. So, going to have to see if they can do anything with that now as they come back, if they can maybe get another kill uh, like they just did. And then, if she does get more, we can already see that the farm is fairly equal in this bot lane. Will she be able to carry that over into the lake? And we did see last game, she, her getting a really big advantage with that Kaisa farm and kill-wise, and not using it. So that's definitely something I want to see them change this game. If Tristana's going to get ahead, to use that in the, in the late game. Yeah, so that was actually very, very nicely played by, uh, by Tristana. So... A BF sword in the pocket as the uh, sort of return on investment. Didn't end up trading one for one, but worth nonetheless. That BF sword, pretty strong uh, first the sort of rated on the side of, uh, of MF. But uh, Lycan, like Wraith back to the farm. And 37 to 29, so it actually looks like Garen having a faster clear than Lycan for some reason, which is uh, very bizarre. So, so far, so good from, from the uh, infamous Garen jungle. Nine point five to the ten point one. Game number two of the best of three VS Gaming 
High School Esports League, hashtag Tonka of the VS Gaming, and uh, myself, GP as well, Sinister, Smiley in the cast. So far, some some interesting, interesting uh, first few minutes for this uh, second game. And oh. our path to the bar side. SAB385 looking to get some sort of uh, rotation behind. Does get the hook, so a little bit of an early one in my opinion. Just unable to quite easily jump out, potentially. Could have just waited for Tristana to jump and then return with the hook uh, to negate that little bit of range. So, but the, the thought process of getting behind them was quite uh, quite good in my opinion, punishing that Malphite. And Malphite is halfway almost now to level 6. I think that's definitely something to watch out for in this bot lane. We see that the rest of the lanes are not happening much at the moment. Trinomir is one level up with 2 farm advantage and that kill. And other than that, we see in mid lane farm still fairly equal. Garen has been farming his jungle quite a bit since uh, Xin Zhao did that for, went for that gank. He's actually uh, almost 10 CS up on the Xin Zhao. I don't think it matters too much that since Xin Zhao did get that kill onto the Tristana, which is going to help him. But uh, I'm definitely watching for this Malphite to hit six now. And then. Oh. I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, that's not probably going to matter too much. Malphite does have that. Uh, Armor shield that is going to provide him some safety, but as I Does said, six as well. Yeah, yeah, he's six now. So I want to see them if misfortune steps up too far, him hitting that button and the Tristana following up. I really think they have a lot of kill pressure with that duo. Jacked up, not scared of the jungle trade here. All the trains coming to the range by starting to build up needs to watch out. He has the undying of rage as well as the backup of like it now. Play up to the backup. You can really see Malphite starting to slightly play more aggressive. He has the tempo, the hook and land onto the cannon. This would be a beautiful opportunity right here just to pull that trigger, the two-man stack. I feel like they should look for the punish. There it is, the two-man locked down, the jump in, the hop skip, pot picking up the first one, looking for the second one, has the reset the jump with the bomb. Not gonna be necessary as Pen Dragon finishes off what he started. Yeah, I don't know. The flash basic attack from the Malphite, very unnecessary. The bomb would have definitely finished off the Blitzcrank from the Tristana, and that would have been a I mean, third kill the, for her. Look at the heal timer, to be fair. So perhaps expecting her to have heal back up, as it did just tick off of cooldown. I mean, that is true so, as well. Fair point, yeah. Just making sure that he finishes it off. But, uh, and in this case, I mean, it is, it is still a Malphite, so maybe if he builds oh. an AP item or two. I had a little bit of a pause on my side, I don't know about you. Oh, I will pause at 9.40. Uh, yeah, just touching back on the items, he's still sitting on that first starting Frostbang. Honestly, I'm surprised he went for the, the AP item opposed to just the standard Relic. His lane phase can be kind of rough into that matchup. But uh, it seems like it's working out with the common as well. I'm in game time. I'm paused at 9.40 now, I'm ready to go. 3, 2, 1, go. Thank you. Two to three, Infernal Drake now secured for the side of WHS so far. Looking very strong, and they're working towards that win condition. They have the Bumpkin Boy, uh, Demacia, as well as that Unstoppable Force now available. So that's two very big ultimates that sort of uh, results usually in the players falling behind due to the fact that their kit's being a little bit weak in the early stages, but not quite punished for it uh, in this case. At the moment, it seems like Vladimir is playing a little bit more safe in this top lane now. He knows that he has... Uh, speaking of playing safe, he's not doing that, but he is just going to pull away. Jacked up stuff. And we saw a lot of... name for a Trindomir. Yeah. yeah, we saw a lot of good stuff from uh, jacked up stuff last game. So he, him playing on that Urgot was fairly decent. He didn't even build pretty much any damage on the Urgot and managed to be a mega raid boss for that team. So we're going to have yeah, to see tanks. what he will do this game since he's a little bit of a different play style now. Will he be able to pressure the side lanes or will he A-Ram? That's the question. Oh, Blitzcrank Hook not going to be there. Uh, Garen sort of just hovering around, not too sure if he wants to be here or not. Channeling the recall and cancelling. Malphard ult, almost ready. Is ready now. Oh, Craig Gipple, Lissandra there. I'm inside, hold my friend. Oh, sorry, hold my hand. A little bit uh, um, out of the mana. He needs to be playing that one a bit safer. I can already see Malphite is actually opting to go for uh, the Seeker's Arm Guard, so it's going to look for the Zonia. It's pretty interesting. If you want to go Zonia's on a support, um, I do think that you need to take the uh, Ruin to get the free stopwatch. Otherwise, it is going to take you a fair bit of time to get that, and it's going to be extra 600 gold as a support. It's quite a yeah. bit of money to invest, considering you could have gone for, uh, let's say, a cheaper AP item or even just build a, a support item for, let's say, like a redemption. Even though I do think AP would probably be good on this bot lane since they are ahead and probably just yeah, want to push this lead. 
I kind of agree with you. I don't feel like Zonius in particular would work out in my fight. Because, I mean, he's a very one-dimensional champion. You, you rock, you fly at them, you knock them up, you do as much damage as you can, and then you die. Or you walk out. You don't really have, like, uh... Oh, Bumpkin just about... You don't really have sustained damage. So there's no real need for a Zonia. Zonia is generally used as a... Means to sort of buy you time for cooldowns so to almost rotate your abilities. So Vladimir would be a good usage or a good user of of Zonias. So you you blow off all your abilities, you hit Zonias or your pull, and your pull and Zonias sort of doing the same thing in in concept. So all that thought there, hold my hand, a little bit of trouble, the slow gonna be applied, but the two man lockdown stun as Mr. Poe walks in, the ultimate applied, Rift Herald secured, Demacia, Mr. Poe finishing off Wraith as a Berserk. Takes a lot of damage himself. Mr. Poe flashing in for the last little bit of damage. Not gonna reach. Trying to walk away. No flash available. He did burn it. But uh, Rift Child secured by the. Uh, and it just uh, seems. The yeah, 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 it just seems like Westfall <laughs> is actually pulling through a lot of good plays individually in the in the lanes. And that's causing him to build up quite a lead again. It's almost the same as last game. But the question is is Berserk gonna get back now? And again, doesn't have that carry potential like he had last game on the Echo. Things are not looking too great for him. And Syndra, who had, by the way, the most damage in the game of both teams last game, already up on CS and one assist. So that's something to look out for. Oh, Mal finds up before it's connecting on only the Eddie carry, but unfortunately it won't allow for uh, either of them to survive as the push away could have been enough, but uh, Pen Dragon unfortunately picking up the double for himself. And there we have it. That's a bot lane. 3-0-2 Malphite and a 2-1-3 Tristana. They're actually pulling off this comp fairly well and the Blitzcrank Tristana just don't know how to deal with it at the moment. I mean, if you hook them, if you hook the Malphite, which he's been doing them all the time, he just seems like he can't get Tristana. Oh, that was Ooh. close. That is a little bit too close to comfort if you guys couldn't see that due to the full screen. Uh, replay, bottom left corner. Rift Child spawned by Jack Duff stuff a little bit too close to the turret. But uh, Luna, what are you doing? Taking so much damage. Unfortunately, no Demacia available as they both flash away. But uh, Garen's Q basically applies a silence on impact. So that would have resulted in the Rift Hole being cancelled, but just able to sneak it out before the, the silence does come through. But uh, Bumpkin Boy, looking pretty cool. I, I, I dig that skin. Yeah, also interesting to note that uh, Blitzcrank finished his remnant of the aspect a little bit too early i mean i wanted to point a little bit earlier but i completely forgot he completed on f on uh, the previous back and he still had quite a bit of gold left so the mission is not done yet so i don't know maybe he's picking up the first item of uh maybe like a zeke's or something like that would have been great a bit more um worth the gold or almost Sandra with a, uh, a little bit of a late ult he does take a little bit of damage but manages to survive aftershock op bumpkin boy now completely uh, it's completely applying pressure, man. That's about it at this point. Just uh, sort of standing around doing a Garen jungle things. But uh, like you mentioned on that support item, it does let him stack a little bit quicker. But uh, referring back to that topic you brought up earlier with regards to punishing the players, I mean, Malphite, like we mentioned before, was a support that sort of works really nicely in low ranks because you don't get punished in the laning phase. In theory, Tiny Gamer and SAB have sort of missed the window to sort of win this lane. As Malphite has now hit that power spike, hit that level 6, and uh, has the ultimate available, so it sort of feels like they've, they've uh, let that one slide and uh, given over that laning phase to the side of red. And I mean, at this stage, it almost feels like it, it helps the Malphite by grabbing him, because you're yeah. sort of locking yourself down as a Blitzcrank by grabbing him, pulling him closer, and then he can just, it's just easier for him to eyeball when to ult then. Yeah, like that's for example, this matchup as the Blitzcrank myself, I would look to try and roam perhaps mid and snowball that lane. His bot lane is pretty much done. You cannot hook the Tristana because she jumps. If you hook the Malphite though, he gets a free engage. So you being there sort of doesn't add any value outside of Misfortune's personal bodyguard. Berserk, Bumpkin Boy, beautifully timed with Sandra's self. Ultimate means that there will not be a Demacia brought down on his head. Holder on the other hand, hand has to flash out of that one to make sure that he stays alive. The silence into that little bit of slither of health, but Bumpkin Boy both surviving with your. Oh, actually, hold that thought. Hold my head. Last little bit of damage. Boy. Well, on the top lane, it seems like Vladimir is going to try and use a sustain to walk away from the fight, but Trinomir has other plans. 
Yeah, so just carrying them out, but uh, mid tier one now down. So this game looking like a WHS driven match, 100%. So the the, the tides have turned, and uh, I I still see the macro. Yeah. So you see, normally at this stage, if if this was normal league, right, I would say, yeah, it seems like W West will actually seems like they should have this game in the bag, right? They have pretty much a head in every lane. Big um, snowball. Do, yeah, big snowball, right? The thing is though. We still, have, we talked about them having two TPs. Will we see Mpangeni's insane macro game from late game go, coming to the late game? I'm not saying this game is over just yet, even though it looks pretty over. I'm going to maybe say give, give a call when it comes to more later in the game and see if they can still use these TPs and the side lane pressure of the Trinity. Because remember, Trinity is doing fairly well in the top lane. He has two CS up. He has a kill. Speaking of uh, a head. Yeah, when Tyrant does find Blitzcrank going down to his side, that is no Tyrant you should be trying to defend, but Wraith on the other hand with the overextend, that's a big win yet again. I, I personally feel like this game's done. I feel like that bot should 100% be able to carry the rest of this match. Justana and Malphite showing us that they have the synergy to pull these uh, coordinated ganks off and dive. So in my opinion, game number two definitely going to the side of WHS. I mean, at this stage, maybe just force down. You can see that they just are completely trying to force the tier 2. Cassandra though. But, uh, like it's the Malphite instead of the Tristan is an interesting decision. I feel like there's a lot more gold sitting on the Tristana's head. Perhaps a misclick as they were very close to each other. But a uh, cheeky rotation or overstay from the side of red. I mean, I mean, shutdown is a shutdown. And that's going to be some good gold over to the Misfortune. That's going to maybe help her come back into the game, but as we said, it's, uh, the bot lane is definitely over, I think, at this stage. Malphite, once he gets more I AP items, his R is not going to do any less damage, and that's something to look out for. He is almost complete with that uh, Zonius. Now, if he had the support, uh, the stopwatch, he would have been probably around 600 gold away from taking it, but he still needs to buy the stopwatch and then finish the Zonius. Yeah, I just, with regards to that snowball, I feel like bot lane just played the lane very well. I don't think that the bumpkin boy Garen particularly had that much impact on the map, so Garen juggled my books, still very questionable. I mean, he even, I think, is going for the late game. He has that phage, so probably going for Triforce, which is pretty interesting. He did go for the uh, Cinderhulk, which made yeah. me feel like he wanted to go tanky Garen and then decided... Uh, you know what, our team is doing really well, so I'm just going to pull Triforce. Just Triforce. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Cheeky, cheeky Triforce. Tons of damage. I mean, I, I guess he can still go Black Cleaver as well. Phage is a good uh, flex item, if you would say like that. You can build either the Black Cleaver or the Triforce, so he can still make a choice, I guess. Like and though. Malphite gets the two-man lockdown. That's the first one, but down dead. Wraith. Tiny Gamer not interested in even trying to carry that one out, just opts to head for the kills of the Flash Investor, but Berserk though it does end up resulting in uh, himself dying thanks to that hole in my head finish off, but uh, Garen picking up his first kill as well. Okay, I think, all continues. I think I retract my statement, I've made up my <laughs> mind. They, they, I, you see, I thought maybe they can macro this game, but Westfall is actually not even giving them time to macro. We are 20 minutes into the game, look at the gold lead, and look at how hard they are pushing Tyrus. They're literally not giving time to stall out the game, and I like this, because last game around this time, we saw a lot of stalling uh, Westfall, and both Westfall and Mbangeni, but mostly Westfall, was very indecisive in what they wanted to do, yeah. and they weren't sure. This game, we're seeing a lot more consistency and and uh, decisiveness from Westfall, and that's definitely what I wanted to see last game, and they're doing really well at that now. Yeah, like, like you mentioned, so basically the first games in the best of threes tend to be a lot closer. Teams not taking as big of risks, but as they work their way into the, the best of three uh, series, they sort of start to play more aggressive, the more natural, comfortable play comes through. So, like we can see here, an absolute stomp, complete opposite of the previous game. And uh, we'll have to see what happens in the game number three. That's the make it or break it, in my opinion. I mean, who knows? We could have an upset still. The game is not by any means done and dusted. But definitely, definitely, WHS's game to throw their ready 8k plus up uh, in terms of gold for that lead. And as well, uh, I mean, top lane should have been not quite leading it. And they do the scale. So perhaps banking on that trend to scale slash carry in the late game for EHS. Still an option. Honest, uh... Honestly, I would. The only way I can see Bungini is doing stuff is working with these two teleports. And you can see that they are sending three people top. So they do know that 
this could be a problem the Trinomia, and they want to make a plan, but obviously they see Trinomia backed off and, and recall, so uh, WS is just going to say, you know what, we're going to go and pressure a different lane again. Bar uh, Dragon is spawning in a few. That will be a... My Dragon isn't showing what Dragon is going to be. Is that happening for you it's as well? A, it's a bug. It's a bug from the current patch and the previous one as well. It's something I did note. It no longer shows on the wall, but you should be able to... Oh, there to, we go. Uh, we have an Earth Drake yes. coming up, so that will help them. That's actually a few decent Drakes. We have the Ocean Drake that could help them in the early game. They secured that. Uh, actually, the, the Dragons that spawn on the time they did is perfect for the game situation. They had the Ocean early. Oh. Oops. Both, both stacking. Malphite stacked. Two man split looking for the triple. The hook gonna be there, but the lockdown is enough as uh, Pan finishes up the kill on a tiny game, and that's misfortune now done. Uh, Tristan is well out. Dying wedge from jacked up stuff says, No, friends, you're not touching me. And uh, that stack not quite working out according to plan. Bit of a back and forth of Berserk. He does go super low. Vladimir Ultimate should be enough as, uh, as the Poe finishes off of that one quite easily. And. Uh, Wraith ignite double tick into that uh, double kill. So the back and forth, two members alive for the two members alive. Even trade. Yeah, Tristana was killed off a little bit too early in that game, and this is something I talked about last game as well when she was Kaisa. It just feels like you give this massive lead over to a bot lane, and Malfoy did his job right. He altered the carry. They killed Misfortune pretty much instantly, but then you had the Tristana that. I don't know. I think she. I don't know if she jumped in with him, but she died way too early, and that's something you need. You need to kite a bit more. Ooh. Make sure you get your DPS down, because that's pretty much your job as the carry, and not delivering quite as much as you should see from the Tristana with two complete items and a BF sword. Yeah, red side uh, now rotating. You saw the pin come through. They're looking to go for that next objective, 100 percent of the time. They're gonna get that trick quite easily. I don't see the contest being worthwhile investment from the right side of. Great. Even if you could manage to get there in time, not worth it with the Baron on the on the map, which is uh, the next massive uh, objective for either sides. Yeah, I think they sort of also now that I think of it, I think Wasteful gave a little bit of this the what they were doing away because the Malphite didn't pull the trigger super quickly, so they walked into the brush, realized what was happening, sort of almost started to back away, and then the Malphite altered. Where if he altered immediately before they could even face check the brush, it would have been a like a oh we we already got you, you know before you even know what's going on. So there was Surprise. sort of a, yeah it was sort of they had time to react either way. I mean the fight still went in their favor. They got the the dragon, so it's not the end of the world. Even though they um, you know they Trinity got the top lane, so let's see maybe they do something with this Trinity after all. Alright, so Baron is the objective to throw out if he was an objective to throw out. So, this is the big win it or break it moment. Let's see where the blue side EHS starts to rotate off. It's going to be that free objective. It looks like it will be with the blue side teleport. Trenomir going in very aggressive. Not much rage available, but that's going to be the immediate uh, rejection from Monsters. No friend, you're not allowed in this pit. That's pretty good. That's Baron off for them. And what will they do with it though? It looks like they are Don't going to. Don't need to take a team fight. Just drive the minions, but it looks like they have ammo plans and Mott. Beautiful two-man lockdown hangar. That's the second jump coming through as uh, the Sanja bites the dust and uh, Red Side Snowball continues, Baron in hand. Yeah, Pendragon using that Zonia's now with uh, that AP he got from it. You see, and, and this is what we talked about as well. He has the Zonia's for the AP. He hasn't used it yet. So, I mean, yes, the AP is going to help him a lot getting that damage down, but... He hasn't used it yet, I don't think he's going to use it at all this game, because they are knocking at Nexus Towers. Misfortune, bullet time, doing as much as he can to try to slow the game down, but it looks like will not be enough as Vladimir Mr. Poe quite easily taking him out. The stopwatch coming, and he clashed that little bit of health left. And uh, the fight continues, Wraith does go down, Mott not able to uh, be assassinated for this team fight, so he can quite easily uh, allow his team to, to win. And uh, carrying to victory, he, he got deleted in the previous team fight, and uh, that resulted in the game sort of slowing down and going for that even trade. But uh, getting number two over to WHS, so that will be the one to one. Yeah, very nice play by Wasteful, bringing back this game, not letting game one get to their head. I mean, they did realize, same as last game, that they were doing fairly well in laning phase and just kept headstrong, made sure they clear, close up the game nice and quickly so that Impangeni can't uh, win the game back with the macro gameplay, with those double TPs that we talked about. So overall, I think 
uh, other than maybe that one shaky team fight at Barron, very, very well played by West for high school. And we actually see as well that overall damage, it does seem like the Malphite almost doing the most damage in the game along with the Tristana and the Vladimir. So overall, massive damage from that team. Maybe swapping out the Garen would be a good call. Doesn't feel like he was super impactful that game. But overall, yeah, it's pretty good team comp, I think, for them. Yeah, I feel like personally Tristana should have been able to do more work. She got so far ahead, but... Uh... A little bit of a misposition. I must say that she did play the jumps quite nicely, so props to her in that regard. Just perhaps work on the positioning and uh, decision making a little bit more. Unfortunately, Tristana not able to get to, not Tristana, sorry, Trinomir not able to get to the point where he could uh, come online, so that pick did not quite work out, unfortunately. But uh, GG well played. Well, guys, we'll see you for uh, game number three shortly, so uh, best of luck to uh, both teams. Ertega needs the. Lockdown won't get it, unfortunately. Has the Sedge ulti though. I think he probably could have actually killed Rakan there if he played it correctly. What are you doing though? Ref Child Sport on the ward. Vans are contesting. Scuttle does get secured by Rain. Reposition, Vanzor. Flashes over the trap. Lots of damage, just short required. Just need one more auto. One more key punk. Both walking blindly. Does get caught off. Rain, speaking of getting caught off. Sexy people with the. Death is a flay a box combination. Lazy Mickey popping the Zonius, but it looks like uh, the final hour pin. Sexy P, Rain, Nexus, Tarak not. Where is the, the base Tarak under siege? Flag and drag out. Tarak does fall and him to not expose. Elder Drake, GG side cannot afford to defend us. This need to let it go so close. You cannot position like that, Tillosaurus. But uh, narrowly surviving. Like, luckily, Thresh missing the hook. If you want to a little bit low, that needs to be careful. Heal has been applied. Tillosaurus just narrowly does go down with the returning pizza. One for one, support for jungle, the flash in. Patar getting yet another kill. Currently four for naught. Looking to try to run away with the game. So, this yeah, is kind of how you're supposed to look for. Yeah, that is the. Are you no, 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 no. You, look, you look for low variance hooks in the sense that it's almost impossible unless they burn a summoner to. to oh. Zadok does get the solo kill. Lindsay supports Sexy B. He's very, very comfortable in his thrash. Zadok on the top side does get the disdain. Lands the Fear Beyond Death, but it looks like Jazzasm is going to be consumed. Popping the ultimate, unfortunately. The fight on the side of GG so far. Red Panda with the 1v4, but Thresh is taking Lisa the property away as he does dash back in. Bitray taking off the top. Still got the Guardian Angel, but GG must have not able to break that down. So yeah, we respawn in for seconds. Man kicks super low, does pick it up. So that's three members of life versus the two from sort of a trade. Needs to be careful. Gorilla very aggressive, both being. Dropped pretty hard. Need to keep in mind that the corrupting potion for Xanak versus oh v death sentence once again. Vans' oh, homing hooks are enabled. The flash away. The ignite has been applied. Sexy P with the flash and looking to get the lantern too. Sexy Holy. P, like I said, he's so comfortable. Um, we've I think we've lost to them. Oh, oh kiddo, Vanzo, Sexy P trying to walk this one off. He has popped the final hour. The dash is not going to be there. He does get popped, and Vanzo going to be able to pick up that kill. You're having that mid priority there. So it allows him to walk first. Jungling royalty, 16 man roster without me feels bad, man. Oh, oh. Majin Shintel, very nice pin. The knockoff is there. Poppy doing a lot of damage. Legacy Miggy walking in. Margin Shintel, but a trouble flash to the wall, but here comes Kiddo with him. Hello! The yells with other fans will knock up coming through, but that's gonna be the support dead. Fear beyond death, popping just as in the way. And he does go down, Zadok picking up yet another kill. Red Raven, the last member left in this fight as Aeroflaxy is just off the front of the screen as the shockwave from Kiddo does pick him up. The ward revealing Frosty Kiddo wants the ace, he's on the hunt. And uh, he does get it there and then. Dangle for the side of Titans. Meanwhile, bot side inhibitor now under siege by Red Panda. The reposition for Batar. Stop watch by Aurex, actually. Maybe a miss click of it too, but he does go for the back line. Batar repositioning the invis is there and beautiful fight, but meanwhile that the Nexus Tire now under siege with well, the EQ flag and drag sexy P super fed. Needs to be careful. Cataclysm. Well, not Cataclysm. It's a Marjus Shinta ultimate. The pin against the wall. Vanzor. Heal invested. Gorilla. Nice little pin from Kiddo. Does get the start on to sexy P. Marjus Shinta will re engage. It looks like royalty not going to be winning this fight. Zello trying to walk away. The movement speed. If you haven't noticed, the key stun decision for the top lane, we have the Garen with the Predator. Predator Garen in the top lane with TP. It's actually pretty, pretty well known bull these days. Very popular. Air Champion taking a lot of damage fields late, so the, the Q return will be there. What a play, what a move. Flash, yeah, the Q flash looks oh. like uh, it's gonna be a little bit close, actually. Oof. 
blue, so you only ultimately gonna be wasted. Sex will be left as a kitty alone out of the open. Does go down, fans are playing Thunder Aggro. No place left, so the turret should be pretty squishy. Ren walking in a kill, just jabbed the Ashen away from the rain stun. No gold gone, thanks. Legacy Miggy Goth running too far away to go for the contest. Gorilla just trying to create some sorts of that little Baron. Then second death is repeat coming through. Ops not to take the fight as they are sitting on a lot of gold. They just came through from the base. Gorilla. Sexy B Lantern. Sexy B just sexy. Oh my god, there's an ulti. I don't know what it is. Soul Shackles. Janna dying to the turret and uh, maybe dying to the Urgard. So that's going to be the final fight coming through. Urgard versus the World Next Exposed. They do turn back on passing out the snare. That's Mad Mayhem going down. <laughs> With the reposition from Baton, not going to be able to keep it alive. Unfortunately, very good effort. The flash up until the source. Nothing too good. Red Panda on the siege. Looking to get that last little bit of damage. Whereas the knot is there, but support down. Jungler down and 80 can Super fed Patar, the Kaiser looking to try to carry this game. Meanwhile, Silver gonna be skating very well. Teleport has come through here comes the Kali with the Silver Mover Speed applied. Locked down onto the back line. The key dredge line will be there. They're able to just delete Patar, so he's not an issue. Nini gonna be caught out as well. And going down. Very nice pick coming through for the side of Titans. Knocking down on the inhibitor tar, so they definitely I don't know if Victor can match this. Okay, Chaos Storm, Aero Frosty. Thanks to Purify trying to walk it away. Does Paul is just so quick though. Flashes away is the last result. The flashes will see you to finish him off. Juggled the Terra group pretty well. Poker. Welcome back, ladies and gents. We are here for game three of Wasteful Boys versus uh, Impongini High School. And it seems like this time I actually opted in to swap around. So this time we will have Wasteful Boys High School on the uh, blue side left. And we will have. Bungeni on the right so straight off the bat here it's going to be a very hard one deciding on a game three ban system because sort of both teams have now taken a game and it's sort of first off is the person who are, is, are you know the person who's <laughs> sorry, sorry. sorry. Get, 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 get my get my thoughts processes together the person who's coordinating the pick and ban process do they have their research in order do they know exactly what they need to ban in combination of game two and one and two? Um, because we can already see that they're still keeping some of the first games banned. So we see Zed being banned out again. It's been banned out every single game. They're just not willing to give it over apparently to um, Hall in My Head. But at the same time, they are keeping game two banned. So we do see Echo and Urgot coming through and Nunu. So it seems like Wasteful Boys High School is just keeping game two spans because they feel like that's what worked for them. them. While in the meanwhile, we see that Mbongeni is going for the Poppy and Zed ban, which is not something that Wasteful Boys High School has has gotten the chance to take at the stage. Last game, we saw that Vladimir did really well in the late game. So uh, that's still open. We saw that the Syndra being left open both games and did really well. So they're not banning away the Syndra. So there's still a lot of priority picks open, which they did already take, which they can take again. Yeah, 100%. I mean, we had that little bit of a cheeky team at Harvard, but uh, I feel like that's a little bit just for the, the, the viewers at home watching. Highly doubt we'd get that team. I most liked in the misfortune. We've had the Mordecai's locked in. Once again, very good flex pick. Could we play mid or top lane? As for the Fizz, much more of uh, likely to be picked into the mid. Sona, we've touched on the Sona. I honestly don't know if I like it. I much, much preferred the second game of Champions, but uh, very, very comfortable or confident in his uh, Sona ability, so we have that lock in. Uh, I don't like this. I mean, Blitzcrank was still open, and... It's blind, it's blind picked as well. Yeah, I don't know. This, this, They can still punish this a lot. I mean, they did ban out the Nautilus, but Malphite is open again, so Malphite can... Again, just wait till six. Are they going to be able to punish a, son a Malphite before six? I don't think they can. Uh, we, that showed before. I mean, Sonar can maybe poke them a little bit, but at the end of the day, just wait to six. And then that's going to even be an easier target to pick for them if they get this, this uh, bot lane. Uh, they are going for the Garen jungle again. Maybe can still flex it, but I mean, Mordecai's at top is probably going to be. So it's going to be a Garen yeah. jungle again in my head. Hall in my head, Definitely. getting the Syndra again. As we said, game one and two got it. Most damage game one. Game two, very solid as well. I really think they should have banned the Syndra. So generally with the drafting phase especially, you want to sort of draft first bats. Either the 100% the have to pick champions, which are too strong. Otherwise, flex picks like the, for example, uh, Mordecai's, which can go top or mid lane potentially. 
Uh, and uh, then you sort of go for the counter. For example, they pick Sona. You kind of want to draft your support. So there's no real reason of showing that uh, a Garen jungle, in my opinion. I feel like perhaps picking your oh, counter yeah. support would have been better in this objective. Sona, not exactly a champion you want to blind pick, but has been prioritized. So a lot of counters available for that, such as the Blitz as well as the Nautilus. But uh, ban phase number two, the Malphi and Tristan off the table. Something that I want to point out, and I think was a good change to the side of Mbangeni, is we saw game one, they picked that Echo in the mid lane, which was banned now. So I think picking the Fizz is sort of similar to the play style that he wants. Uh, you have that AP Assassin uh, that has some good safety features, like uh, the, the uh, uh, Trident that he can jump onto. So that's something that I think is a good change to the team. I don't feel like the uh, last game made a big difference taking it. Lissandra it was sort of a very safe pick that didn't fit his play style. We saw him carry the games and Lissandra sort of needs to get to a late stage where her passive can make a big difference in killing people in fights and in this stage. I think the Fizz was a good pick. That is a Draven, dude. Uh... That is an AD character that's not particularly easy to play, but has big rewards. Very, very aggressive early game. Pairing it with the Sona, Lucian as a counter to the Draven is a little bit ballsy. That's saying, I don't care that you guys have this early game aggression. I want to play an early game AD character as well and try to beat you on it. Pairing it with the Pike could work out quite nicely, though. A quick pick onto the Sona is uh, pretty much guaranteed to be burst out. And we know SAB has been struggling with that Sona positioning. So... Not a bad pickup as a counter, in my opinion, from the side of uh, WHS. Yeah, I think it's a good pick in the bot lane. First off, the Lucian and Draven both are some of the better ADCs early game in the game. So they definitely don't have to wait for scaling straight off the bat. They can try and match them in this bot lane. And we know that's already from game one, unless Sab has gone through some mind transformations or maybe their coach, uh, if they have one, or the, the team leader or whoever they have. I'm interested to, to know that, yeah. Um, if someone grabs Sab by the by the head and be like, you you need to watch where you stand, boy, because that's, that's off, boys. Yeah, definitely, we get the spot and to tell them to take off the the headsets in that case. In this case, I, I, I think the Pike is gonna gonna take advantage of the zone not being misplaced. So let's see how that's gonna go in the bot lane. Oh uh, yeah, definitely in theory, Lucian Pike should be able to get a sort of bit of a lead versus the Sona Draven. Renekton ops so team go for the TP in this matchup versus Mordekaiser. Uh, perhaps expecting more to go for the TP instead of the Ignite. Uh, generally, Renekton would be played uh, with, with the Ignite. Can go with TP, though, in certain matchups, I suppose. But uh, Mordecai's, on the other hand, more standard to go for the TP. But uh, Sendra up and up to go for Barrier this game. Uh, versus the first, perhaps, looking to negate a lot of that damage. But uh, like you mentioned before, I'm quite interested to see whether they actually have coaches involved. Like... Is there perhaps a higher ranked player that helps out with the picks and bans and whatnot? I'm sure that at least one of the teams would have uh, somebody advising them. I think it would definitely be good for them to have that. Not that I know of anyone. I mean, if they ask someone fairly higher rank, I don't think it's from the, the championship teams. Because I haven't heard anyone talk about them being asked to be to be coaches, which I think they should I mean, I be. Think, if... I, think, I think I've heard Hextic mentioning here or there. I don't know if it was Spartan or somebody that was helping out one of the sides. But, oh, okay. uh, we'll That's see. interesting. I definitely think if if there are some people from the uh, from the schools listening, it's definitely worth joining maybe places like the League of Legends South African Facebook group and looking for some high ELO players that are maybe involved in the regular um, VS championships. Uh, because that can definitely, you know, help you. You get some experience from people who's who's been at the highest level, you know, in South Africa yeah, at least. Yeah. Which, in the great scheme of things, isn't that high in comparison to sort of international waters. But nonetheless, it will definitely, definitely help. There's a lot of small things that can be fixed, such as drafting, uh, just like champ select nuances and whatnot. So, uh, like you mentioned, Facebook group for on essay is a very, very good starting point. Yeah, just small things as well, like we mentioned, like taking the right summoners into the correct matchups, uh, making sure your your builds are optimal. We we talked about like the Malphite, for example, even though they won the game, his build definitely not being optimal. So it's small things you can fix that will make a very big difference straight off the bat. Yeah, agreed. But uh, Sinister, the dreaded question for game number three, looking at the pick and ban phase, who do you think takes the match purely off of the, the champ select and uh, not the player's individual mechanics and skills? This game is actually one of the hardest, I would think, from both games. I think both games, there was like very weird matchups, some niches that you can definitely point out that would be. But I think both teams 
have solid answers. For example, the only thing that bothers me from Mbangeni is the sonar. Other than that, I really like the Fizz on Berserk. It really fits his play style. I think it's going to be a really good pick for them. Uh, I like the fact that they have uh, the Vi. I think that can help them really with picks later on. We did talk about uh, Mbangeni having really good uh, shot calling and, and macro play. Hopefully that person still has strong mental after they lost the game. Um, but other than that, I think that giving them the Syndra again was a bad move. Lucian Pike is a good answer to this lane. I don't think Sonar Draven is the best. Draven really good though, but I mean like with the specific combo kind of the aggressive has, support, yeah. like a Zyra or something. Definitely. Yeah. I think that's the downfall of that team comp mostly. We saw him play really good jacked up stuff, playing really good on Urgot the first game, so I like the Renekton. I literally just think they needed to change up the spot lane that I would have maybe said Mpongeni, but I think there is some flaws in their comp, so I'm going to go with Wasteful Boys on this one. Okay, and the Garen Jungle. <laughs> that's okay see the garen jungle is still a bit of yikes but i still think even though the garen jungle didn't do a, a lot last game i feel like he did a lot uh, um he was decisive enough. at least yes he yeah. when the when there was team fights he didn't stand back and you know like some garens would just try and soak up damage not do much he actually flash forward try to do damage try to execute people with his ultimate so yes it wasn't the best but he did try and do his best on that pick so i'm not gonna you know, given too much punishment for it. The one thing that I am looking at now is he has fleet footwork on a Garen yeah. jungle. See, this is the type of thing we need. We spoke about in champs, like getting coaches in, even using a website. I mean, I don't think it's illegal at the at the venue to have a website open to to get for yeah, rooms and stuff. So, I mean, if if you're not sure on what to take, even if you're not sure at specific matchups, just go to for standard. Honest, I don't know if you could find any stuff on Garen Jungle for runes. Like, <laughs> that's, that's I mean, just like some, some meta breaking. <laughs> yeah. But uh, nonetheless, like you mentioned, uh, we'll be jumping in. Uh, honestly, I, I'm quite uh, excited to see perhaps some more of the Hole in My Head gameplay, see what RC has if they do take him off the Syndra, because he's picked it three games in a row. So I'd like to know where his uh, champion pool goes next when that comfort pick's not available. But uh, unfortunately, it won't be happening as we do jump in for the final game of the first series. WHS in, in blue and uh, EHS in red. And uh, let's go, dude. Yeah, I'm very excited. I mean, I think one of the biggest red lights to me still is giving over the Syndra. I'm, I'm not too sure to why they would do that. I mean, if you are on the losing side, which they were the last game, you need to change things up. And just give, the Z is a hard uh, champion to play. It's not that easy. With Syndra, is sort of, you just... You land your skill, your your stun, and that's all first of a free gank if the jungler comes. Even if you don't land your stun, you make sure you have balls on the ground, and you press R, and you just delete someone. That's much easier than having to outplay someone on a Z, for example. So I think definitely if they wanted to change things up, leave the Z open, let, let just change it up. That He's comfortable on Syndra now. Now it's going to be his third game. He's warmed up. Yeah, oh, speaking of which, looks like a bit of a stack coming through. Players not too sure if they want to be there, though. Nice little cheeky knockback. Forcing the Sentra East on is pretty massive, actually. The Q not available means he won't be able to get the shove or the poke, especially into a melee matchup against Fizz. Perhaps that's something that is uh, pretty massive. But uh, where's Garen's items? <laughs> Oh my. <laughs> That's Bro, the not... Dude, there's no Mesa available for Garen, so you just know what a build cap of it. So it looks like Garen, unfortunately, for getting yeah, to I mean, you can't build... items. You can't... Okay, sorry. Um, by the way, I had some technical difficulties. Oh, I'll pause again. Uh, pausing at 1.25. Okay. Uh, we have insane lags to Syndra. Don't, uh... Yeah, it seems like only Syndra or the one team is lagging. We've already spoken to the... Uh, admins at hand saying they shouldn't be lying, so I feel like perhaps it's them in particular, maybe they're their router or switch or something that they're connected to. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it could be a loop in the network as well, but I'm actually paused on 125 now. Uh, three, two, one, go. Cool. Yeah, That's I... Uh, so far. My client actually decided to crash. I had to reload, but fortunately nice we chance. do have leak on the SSD now, so it was a quick one. Quick reconnect here. But uh, top side, Mr. Poe versus Jacked Up stuff. That's the matchup in particular I'd like to watch out for. I feel like that matchup could go either way. I definitely think it should have favored the Renekton and had he gone Ignite, but uh, let's we'll see what he can do with the teleport instead. Mr. Poe. Zack. Oh, 
Old man with the butt of him at this point, so a little bit of damage in favor of the side of uh, Blue. Oh, sorry, Brent. And there we go, we have ba Garen backing, and he does have his, uh, his uh, jungling item now at least. That's pretty massive though, because after the first camp, he's still level 1, because the reduced experience. Oh, cheeky. Uh, Graham coming through. Pike. You see, that's something also you need to remember when you are playing one of these um, early game comps where you really need to try and all in early into the game. When you see the pike grab, there needs to be some form of communication between ADC and support. Between, I'm going to grab him now when you need to trade. That That's how you win these early games. As soon as you pull in the Draven, you immediately try and maybe get off a stun or the Lucian full combo is in, And that's how you're going to either shove him out of lane or maybe get some kill pressure down. The so bot side, tiny gamers so far, just looking to try to stack up uh, some gold. Draven, the kind of any carry that you want to invest time into. So I would have liked to see Vi potentially playing towards the spot side of the map to try and get that Draven snowball, especially in a matchup that may quite easily go in favor of the side of Blue, which you cannot afford as Draven is going to fall off super hard if you don't get someone of a lead on him. Now the question is, is Vi going to be here in this bot lane? to help Draven cash in, because that's something always to look out for when you are against a Draven. Ooh, nice pull there from the Mordekaiser. So far, so good. Nobody playing too aggressive. I mean, bit of back and forth bashing in top side, definitely favoring Mr. Poe and his Mordekaiser. Mr. Poe, is that a Dragon Ball Z reference? It could be. It's also um, Kung Fu Panda, I believe. That's also the, oh, right, the, turtle, right, right, the right. turtle is called Mr. Oh. Poe, I believe. Beautiful flash, depth charge, gonna be there. unfortunately not gonna be able to land the burn skin, but it should be enough ignite. Invested on the heal a little bit late, so won't be able to get much out of, out of that, but uh, first support down for that uh, death, and it looks like a bit of a repeat of that first match. Yeah, and uh, the Sona again getting easily killed as the usual I, me personally overall n not a big sona fan as you know i'm a non matter yeah definitely i mean there's there's a lot of utility supports that can work so much better if you do like utility i mean yourself it could be jenna oh, top side of night can be applied mr poe getting the kill but it looks like like and wait for the counter a lot of shield i don't know if you have the damage via aftershock and all there's Ooh, a way to try and force the flash away though but yeah, like you, like you mentioned, honestly, I don't think Sona's that bad, but there's a situation and this is not it. You cannot blind pick a Sona. Training. so far. I mean, first not doing too badly considering he's into a uh, ranged matchup, making sure that he is getting still his farm, even though um, he's getting poked up pretty hard. Doesn't have TP this game like he had with Echo the first one, which I think helped him a lot. Securing the CS lead over Syndra. Um, but yeah, other than that, it feels like it's not too bad. He is going to back now, and the wave is pushing into the Syndra, so I think it's not too bad for him, actually. Raven, a fair chunk of CS down, but was not the one to go down. Uh, Bone Skier not going to be there. Um, yeah, so just recalling that, that gank, Sona was caught out. It's probably better off that Sona dies than Draven. Like we mentioned before, it's sort of losing a lot of gold value as well as the passive. Unless he cashes an out, could have been pretty game breaking, but yep. uh, the, the heal was invested. It's definitely something on Draven that you always want to. You, you want some jungle pressure. If you can't, like in this case, it's going to be much harder for them now to get that stack in themselves. Garen. Bumpkin boy. Didn't apply the silence. That was interesting. Unfortunately, the, the Renekton does have that double dash on the reset of the minion, so he is just going to walk it off. But that is going to be on cooldown for a few seconds now, and Garen is looking to flank. Well, if it takes oh. too long, though. Burn skewer attempts. Just going to be grabbing minions at this point. Like fish in a barrel. Ooh, we do have pings coming uh, bot for, from the Vi, like we mentioned. This is the kind of play that you do want to see from Mbangeni. Berserk. Forced to flash out. Berserk still sitting on that fish. So he has the uh, the ultimate available still. Opting not to go for their barrier held, but uh, head burning the flash. He actually does have the corruption pot over the Syndra, which doesn't have any pots at the moment. So that's going to help him stay a bit more sustained up in this lane. He can't, can farm a bit more easily and will have a little bit more damage when it comes to those engage. My bot side looking to pick up a blue versus the grump decision from Bunkin Boy. Uh, train the top side, jacked up stuff, very aggressive. He does realize he's playing into a Mordekaiser, but they're gonna be in the Shadow Realm now. 
and uh, jacked up, fighting or biting off a little bit more than he can chew. Once again, I think that Ignite would have been the make it or break it. Had Renekton had Ignite in that fight, potentially going in his favor, but uh, not I mean, working out for him. Personally, I think straight off the bat, that was probably a doomed fight. He, When he started the engage, he was already taking minion aggro. So the minion wave was already helping Mr. Poe in that fight from the, from the get-go. Uh, Mr. Poe also has the blasting one and the ultimate, which is going to help him almost deal with the Renekton's ultimate because he also gets stats back and will deal more damage. I don't know. I think from the start, that was not the best fight for uh, jacked up stuff to take. I mean, if you're thinking about it, the Shadow Realm somewhat countering Renekton because Renekton likes to sort of fight in the wave because he in his opponent's wave, so he gets that fury generation and lifesteal, but the Shadow Realm takes you away from these other elements into... Uh, into another realm almost, so I feel like that's quite a nice interaction, but that's gonna be a cheeky steal coming through. Wraith able to pick up the Bumpkin Boy buff, but uh, Rotation. Oh, Slash, we know mid side hole in my head. A lot of damage, they're not gonna be applied. The barrier is gonna be burned very early, but Berserk finding himself in an awkward situation. The science now applied as he casts his way towards those turrets. Flashing away beautifully played actually, so no death is gonna be coming through just yet. But uh, Hollow My Head still sitting on that ult. Could have maybe looked for the damage onto you and to breathe there, don't they? Yeah, at this stage, again, uh, Wasteful Boys High actually have three kills already, 2k gold lead. So we already see again, it seems like they are fairly good with their laning phases. They know how to do to trade really well and to, uh, to get the leads in these lanes. It's been a recurring theme, even in game one when they lost. Yeah, 100%. But, uh, I mean, it's not a massive lead, but it is 3 to naught in favor of the side of WHS. So, so far early game, uh, looking like a uh, blue side dominated match. Meanwhile, bot side, that may just be the last stacks tiny gamer. Oh, nice little flash, but the, the cow, so in a block, and it just in time, a slit of health available. But that uh, death, that, that, that uh, ultimate from Pen, the uh, cash is not going to be there. Yeah, unfortunately, a bit of a early press of the a little bit of trigger finger happy there from the from the pike. But I think that death not going over to Draven is going to be very important. That means he's not completely shut down yet. But his CS is looking a bit detrimental to him there. So I know with a bit of an overstay, that's still a little bit too greedy. But meanwhile, our top side, Mr. Poe now. Go, wait, hang on. That's an interesting interaction. I guess it was Violet that was taken to the Shadow Realm. So the one v one into the one v one again. But uh, bot side Sona, like I mentioned, overstaying, just luckily surviving. So that's gonna be uh, Lucian with a slither half as well. Play style cashed in as Bumpkin Boy rotation towards the bot side level five, unfortunately due to that late uh, purchase on the items. Oh, Draven looking to try and cash in there, maybe got a little bit of farm, but I don't know. I don't know if the Lucian was low enough. If he was, that would have been pretty easy for him to finally get that cash in. Still on zero deaths, not too late for the Draven to come back to this game. Yeah, so Draven, I honestly thought that was going to be his uh, his downfall, but uh, likely surviving. Pike a little bit trigger happy on that death from below. Yeah, the one thing also to note is that I feel like Renekton should have won an early game against the Mordekaiser. And Mordekaiser being a little bit better in the late game, I feel like once he has some AP items, so... I feel like this Mordekaiser is just going to get stronger and stronger as the game goes on, and that's going to be a problem for them later. Oh, bit of a yoink. Jacked up stuff. I think too much at this point. So 79 to 67 CS. Tiamat's still in inventory at 4 with the uh, Renekton. So just wants to play it safe, realizing now, hang on, I can't actually beat this guy in a 1v1 anymore. Just wait for the Vi assistance. And uh, try and use that. In your favor, it didn't work out the last time. Mordekai is one of the few top laners that is a little bit risky to, to gank post 6 due to the nature of the ultimate. So, looks like bot side pen dragon, the flash gonna be the Sona, only able to lock down the support, unfortunately. Tiny Gamer now done for it, losing half his stacks, and uh, SAB in a little bit of trouble as well. The second one not gonna be there, the flash will be enough to keep him alive just before Mott finishes him off, thanks to that uh, cheeky cheeky. Culling to the face, and uh, speaking of face, it's a Wraith get a punch. Fizz not able to mark it down, but uh, that Wraith ult will be enough. Salt and battery. And, and we have a uh, bit of a back and forth. And we have one shutdown kill over now to Berserk, which is which was the carry for 
uh, Empangenian game one when they won the game. So let's see if they can do anything with that. Sona not having a really good time on the bot. Actually, everyone in all of their lanes, plus the jungler, having a bit of a rough time at this stage. Whoa. Interesting decision by Mordekaiser. That worked out very, very, very nicely. So now Rift Herald secured for the side of Blue takes away any opportunity for a steal. I can respect that decision. Uh, that's pretty pretty good and I mean it's getting a bit lost now for Impangeni. I mean Westfall are doing a, a lot of good work here. Not only with the, like pretty much just winning all of the lanings laning phases, but also they're making those rotations, making sure that Impangeni does not get the macro down and now he's gonna spawn top and there's a lot of plates still available here. So that's gonna be a lot yeah, of gold that's over. True. So plates dropping at the 14 minute mark means that that rift out super super efficient early game. So that's gonna be a lot of gold over the side of blue into the pockets onto mostly the Mordekaiser as well as the guy, but both side Pendragon wanting to go for an engage cheeky mark back says uh, Tiny Gamer throwing the sand aside and uh, quite easily cancelling that burst because a good avoidance of any fight there but uh, holding my head. Cheeky trade. Fish. It does land. Dodges the knockback and that's gonna be a free kill. Nicely played by Berserk. Getting the EHS their second kill for the third match. Will it be enough though? Will Fizz be able to do anything with this? I mean, if you look at the team, if a Fizz comes in to maybe assassinate the Syndra later, can Mordekaiser just ult him away and then deal with him in the Shadow? I mean, even if he does lose the fight in the Shadow Realm, I just feel like that's pretty much the only damage at this stage. Draven having that death means his, his gold is no longer an option for him to cash in. He only has a BF sword, so they don't have a lot of other carries they can comp uh, deal uh, rely on in this game to get damage down for them. Yeah, something to note is that Sona hasn't actually finished to support first upgrade. They're still sitting in the, the original state, which is not a good ha habit. You generally want to upgrade at least once for the gold generation. Past that point is your decision, seeing as it doesn't give you much outside of an extra ward and a little bit of stats. But, uh, not looking too hard so far. And, uh, Sona falling, uh, we're trying to do the best they can to try and uh, keep that turret alive. Beautiful engagement with the from Pendragon, able to finish it off as he does pick up the kill on a Draven. So that's going to be the second death on a cash out, but uh, SAB now stuck between a pike and a hard place. Beautiful crescendo, unfortunately, not going to be enough as the turret does drop, and SAB going to go back to swimming with the fishes. So that's, that's a repeating trend I've noticed that uh, players tend to overstay when they shouldn't try to defend a turret. Yeah, I think at this stage it's. I don't know if th this is even looking more done than the previous game at, at the moment. Is when Draven has two deaths, there's almost no way for him to come back this game unless the enemy team literally runs into him com continuously and just gives him shutdown gold the whole time. I don't see how he makes it back into this game. Lucian is most probably going to back now with some gold, get his first item done. Uh, I mean, other than that, you also have the pike that has 302. So there's going to be a lot of executing factor from the pike as well. Oh, Fizz. Uh, that's going to be the first taken out. So Mordekaiser is doing his best to try and uh, keep the middle lane away from the rest of the fight as the Jacked Up stuff is able to take out the counter. But Hole in My Head is now dead. Not for two for one. But uh, the fight doesn't end there. Demacia. Avail or not available actually as he's really useless to so try to just spin his way to victory for this one but Sonya for the save jacked up stuff not gonna be enough this pumpkin boy flashes in for the final hit but uh, Berserk on the other side of the screen able to wiggle his way away from that Mordekaiser so we have an 8,000 gold lead now at 15 minutes 12 kills 3 towers like they can at this stage pretty much just uh, force any objective and I don't think they will be able to handle it i mean they're already taking this tier 2 mid and there's not much Ooh. they can do about it yeah i mean something that's very interesting is that generally with a lead like this it mostly sits on one player but in this case it's actually spread between multiple members which is very very ideal because you've sort of got all your characters that you want to get ahead at sitting on this like uh, gold lead so that means more items that means a more even snowball across the map opposed to one player who potentially could be locked down in some sort of chain cc fashion so, very, very good spot for the side of WHS and uh, definitely their game to throw at the stage.
seems like they will be able to pick up tier two in mid lane for absolutely free. I mean, Lucian is alone. Fizz can to look at picking him off here. He needs to make sure that he does back it out. Wraith. Here Fizz we go. not going to be able to land. Unfortunately, Shark now down. Does invest anyway. The, the crescendo not connected to anybody either. Bumpkin Boy now entry for the side. Science apply jacked up stuff. Dash in the wings. The status line comes through. But uh, not exactly what you want to be seeing. Is that's got a lot of crucial ultimates now burned for the side of red, which means there should be a free siege coming through. But Berserk has other ideas. Look at to try to take out the AD carry as uh, Wraith commits to the Mordecai's and not the member you want to go on in this case. And, and you can uh, see the team slowly crumble, making a pressure. lot of big mistakes. Yeah, I mean, first off, the Fizz missing, and then not backing out immediately after realizing that you don't have much to follow up with. So not missing her ult, and then. First trying to go in for the second engage without ult, but then the Vi ulting the wrong person. So a lot of misplays here from uh, Mpongeni High School. You're going to misplay his first beautiful flash. Just going to be able to finish up Lucian with that early investment. Giving him a little bit of time to sort of just watch uh, where he decides to go. So nicely counter flash away. Berserk able to finally get that uh, pick that he wanted to. And he looked for in that initial engage. But Jacked Up Stop has other ideas. Just doing the best that he can to try to clear that uh, tier 3 turret. I mean, honestly, it's not impossible to come back from this point. They do have the turtle, they have the base turret still available, but being all berserk. Showing us that he's comfortable in Echo, he's comfortable in Fizz as well, and he's uh, doing the best that he can to try and uh, pull his team back into this. Yeah, is he going to 1v5 or actually 1v9 in this case, since he is uh, pretty much all of the kills at the moment for um, Mbongeni? So it feels like he is still sitting on the, the stopwatch, something to keep in mind. Yeah, that can also help him, uh, like you said in the previous game, actually, with the Malphite. It's a very good uh, item for the Fizz, since if you do find yourself in a sticky situation, you pop the Zonias, and then you can just use your Trident to uh, skip out of this fight, and you'll just be okay. The 13-5 to game number 3 of the best of 3 WHS sitting in the Cloud Drake, and... Uh... Definitely a game that is going to be favored towards blue for this uh, closeout. I mean, this is the point where teams tend to struggle. They've got a very good lead, so you should be able to snowball in theory, but it's going to come down to correct macro as well as positioning, not letting a player get caught out. I mean, Fizz is the player to watch for the side of, of red. The uh, the Berserk one in the mid lane, he shows us that he's comfortable. He will assassinate your carry if you miss position. And uh, you can see that, that pressure being applied. By him, not even minding the fact that uh, Pendragon is right there looking for the burn scare. Oh. Just one thing to keep in mind, and we did talk about this a little bit in Champ Select. Mr. Poe did not take TP on the Mordekaiser. Yes, it did help him a lot with that fight uh, in laning phase, but that does mean that Renekton has TP advantage, so possibly can maybe look at drawing him away from the fight. So it could really open yeah. up. Uh, the possibilities oh. for Fizz to assassinate. Yeah. Temp does land the shark, lost damage, drops the Zonia, so he has a little bit more time. Salt and battery, that's gonna be the uh, Lycan Wraith dropping down the pick as well. Lucian now dead, big fine set side of uh, red, but here comes Mr. Poe. Does not care if you've uh, assassinated the rest of his team, he is looking to take some fights. But now, return kill, Bumpkin Boy picking up that one. Plus the Yoink Fizz. Ooh, misplay from Pendragon. Tiny game of DC, just standing AFK to the turret. No pause. Like I think they Seems didn't realize. Like yeah. Got a bit of a yellow repeat situation. That's unfortunate. Oh, Bumpkin Boy, SAP. Fizz though. Bumpkin Boy taking the aggro, might just go down for it. He does the ignite. Lick it and try to overextend and punish the Sona, but ends up just paying the price for it. That's going to be his first death. That's a massive shutdown over to Berserk, something to keep in mind. Actually, potentially that was... Uh, was that, was that uh, Sona that picked it up, actually? No, it was first. It was first. thought perhaps Sona's ignite was a plan. Yeah, could be. And I mean, Sona did go for uh, the extra AP. Uh, she did go for the... Um... Ardent. Ardent, instead of uh, maybe like an uh, um, Athens or Redemption, so also still no support second tier and no scanner, so I think the Sona definitely needs some uh, some coaching guidance. Oh, Pandragon though. Puts Renekton against the Drake, that is not what you can do when your, drag or your jungle is not there. Garen dying just before that, very risky. 
fight or dragon attempt in the first place. This may just be the throw as Red Side is slowly trying to claw the way back in, but Lycan like Wraith is going to be taken out by Pike Assassinated, and uh, that's going to be that gold value shared as Tiny Gamers. Pause does come through, only now realizing that it can pause. I mean, that DC was probably about a minute to two minutes ago. Yep, I mean, they lost a complete objective and Tiny Gamer died underneath the tower and only then they paused. So that's a bit of a a bit of a questionable one. I mean, maybe they did not, was not sure. I know pre pre previously in, yep. the, in, the, in the year, I remember that they said they think they didn't allow pauses in the yeah, APCL. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Like they, throughout the season, they've been playing with no pauses allowed. So is it different at the VS Gaming Finals event itself? Because I know VS Gaming standard rules allow for pauses. Yeah, definitely. I just I just feel like maybe that was miscommunication. I still feel like even back then, pauses should have probably been allowed. Maybe a school rule? I'm not sure. Yeah. It could just be a time thing, because they do play best of once for a reason. So perhaps lying for a pause would... Uh... Have uh, caused a delay in that kind of thing, but even like a five minute pause, I think, is uh, or should be allowed. Yeah, I mean, if I was playing at school and it wasn't school time, I would definitely use my 30 minute pause to uh, make an excuse not to go to class, not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure they play after school, too, fair day. But uh, I mean, everybody's at the physical events, so I, I don't see when there would be an issue with pausing. I mean, it's not like uh, you can exploit that particularly, the admins are right there, they stand behind you, Overwatch. But, uh, Hopefully the net issues will be uh will be fixed shortly. Looking yeah, at uh I mean if it's only it. one person, it feels like it should maybe could either be a, a switch issue or maybe the PC. So it, maybe they have spares that could maybe borrow him a PC, I'm not sure. But other than that, looking at the game, uh there's a, I don't know if they'll be able to bring it back. I mean that's a ten K uh, gold lead. Uh, for for blue side and five towers and they have the cloud drake now as well so at this stage they can pretty much i don't even know if they need baron they don't need to do a 50 50 they can pretty much just fight it down and and just take the base in my opinion yeah 100 percent. i mean do you honestly see that that comeback being like snowball i mean i feel like they're slowly pulling it back into their favor let's say tiny uh tiny gamer reconnects do you feel like Fizz has it in him to, to bring it back? I mean, it's still a 650 gold bounty on the Mordekaiser. So this, in theory, if he assassinates him, he's potentially sitting on yet another item, his third item complete, which is a pretty massive spike. But he's a 1v5 to an extent, with arguably Renekton uh, at his side for this, this game. I feel like the, the bot lane not particularly adding that much value yet, at least. But uh, I don't know. My opinion, money is definitely going on the side of uh, Blue for taking the entire series, which is... Uh, most likely what's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, Renekton and Fizz is going to have to pull out a lot of stops to uh, to win this game. I mean, Renekton, in the previous fight, we did see get the double kill. So he, he is trying his best, but at the end of the day, there's a Mordekaiser, and with a Mordekaiser, he can choose who he takes